Hello everyone, welcome to Ron's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I guess obviously I'm, I'm Rob. I, I don't know why I have to introduce myself. My name, my name is up there. Uh, hello, welcome. Welcome to the stream for those who are finding me for the first time. Uh, and welcome back to everyone who likes to come hang out and chat and either help me play a game, correct me when I make mistakes, have fun with us, or you know, just, just lurk. You can lurk. <laughs> just kidding, happy Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you all for joining live in the chat. I appreciate it. Matuj, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate the support. Oh, you haven't played this game. I would have thought, Matuj, for sure you would have played this game. I would have thought for sure. Interesting. <laughs> Edgar saying never saw a successful playthrough, so good luck. No, no, no. You're not going to see a successful playthrough today. Huge new warning. I literally... Took the shrink wrap off this game, not yesterday, but the evening before. Uh, this is my third playthrough. I've only played solo. I've only used the carpenter. I'm going to use the carpenter again. Because today in the Discord, our producers were telling me that uh, just play with the carpenter. That's, you know, your best chance. Again, this is a pretty beefy game. Uh, lots of rules. Very fiddly. Definitely not streamlined. I don't know why it has a second edition that's exactly the same as the first. Other than banana token upgrades. Um, but yeah, it's a game that I saw was highly recommended about a year and a half ish ago when I was searching for solo games to play on the channel. This one hits like pretty high up on the solo list. It's in the top 100 on board game geek. Uh, so I was interested in getting it. I, when I ordered or no, when I was looking for sword and sorcery, I tried to buy it from my local game store, long story, short kind of thing. Uh, I tried to buy sword and sorcery last, not the holiday season, just past the one before that to play on my channel because it was recommended solo pretty highly. Uh, I ordered it through my local game store. They canceled my sword and sorcery order. And then like the next day, cause, oh, because they had a stock issue. They didn't actually have a copy. Uh, the next day, my Facebook prompted me with a marketplace ad of a used copy of sword and sorcery. Actually, not just a shrink wrap was removed. No tokens punched of a Kickstarter of sword and sorcery. So I immediately messaged a guy. He had a huge list of games in the ad. One of them was Robinson Crusoe. And I thought, oh, I saw that game on list too. I'll get it. So I added that to the list. So I didn't know there was two editions. So I literally have this uh, first edition of the game, okay, uh, published by Z-Man Games. And I got it. It's used. Uh, and I paid only, like less than $20, maybe $20 tops. Like he threw that in the deal. I bought Sword and Sorcery. He threw that game in. But I, I said to throw it in before I showed up. He just kind of gave me bags of games. And I left. I didn't realize I got an old edition of it. Okay. So I always had on my list that one day I'll play it. And then if I like it, I'll buy the second edition, which you see on your screen here. Um, but I didn't play it. I've had it for about a year and I just have never played it. Uh, so during the holidays, I saw there was a sale on this game. Uh, so I got some money off on it and bought it uh, on sale and figured, why not play with the latest game? I'm sure it's got a better rule book and stuff, you know? Uh, and you know, more refined rules and that kind of thing. Um, but then I found out it's not really the case. It's literally just, they changed the shape of the box. It's published by a different publisher. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's got banana tokens. Like literally the upgrade is they changed yellow cubes to the shape of bananas. Like literally that's all that's different. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this game is very polarizing. A lot of hate for this game online. Like it is in the top 100. Uh, where is it? It is uh, number 55 of all board games ever. Like, you know, like 100,000 board games in Board Game Geek's database. And the community has rated this so well that it has hit uh, 55 out of all board games that exist, okay? Uh, it's from 2012. And, and the funny part is it only has one entry, I think, from 2012. Even though the second edition, uh, I don't know if it's even called a second edition. I guess it's not. It's just literally a, a reprint with a different publisher. It's kind of a weird one. Uh, but in 2016 is when that new version came out. Uh, but they just have one entry here because it's literally the exact same game with just different tokens is pretty much, uh, pretty much it. But it's not an upgrade. Like, I, I didn't realize that I still... I shouldn't even have bought it, to be honest. I shouldn't have bought the second one. Um, but it's okay. Like, at least I'm playing with the latest stuff. So when you guys see it, you know what the game looks like. And it's the only one you can really buy right now unless you're getting something secondhand. But literally, this is the only game I've bought in twice before playing it. <laughs> I feel like uh, Animation Raptor, uh, Tiny Fred Babin, if any of you guys know who that is, 
buying multiple copies of the same game, you know, before even playing it. Accidentally backing the same Kickstarter, you know, m multiple times, that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wish he was here right now. Anyways. <laughs> but yeah, let me catch up with the chat, you guys. Uh, I I'm curious. Some people are already telling me in the chat they're, they're going to watch the stream, but, not, but not, not like it because they don't like the game. Uh, I'll give you my thoughts on it uh, at, at the end of the play, or you'll hear me during the play. I'll try to save my thoughts for after um, and just play it. But I've only played twice. So again, these are like early thoughts. I've only played it solo. I was talking to George A in our producer chat earlier uh, on Discord, and he was saying that he really wants me to play two-handed because that's where the game shines solo. Uh, it's one of those games where like the solo mode's kind of like tacked on the true solo, and it's maybe not the most fun experience. It's just kind of put on there so, you know, to sell more copies kind of idea. Um, but it, supposedly it works, it's just not as good. So you want to play two-handed, supposedly, with two uh, survivors, heroes, whatever they're called in this game, characters. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> yes, it's not about winning this either. Here's the thing, I feel like a lot of the polarizing feelings and the frustration people have with this game is it, it's meant to like you're never supposed to win really unless i'm assuming it, and i relate this game very much when i was reading this game um when i was reading the rules for this game i was getting heavy vibes from this war of mine and i'll say that i learned obviously you learn and we've played this war of mine on the channel a couple times yes tons more story there there is different things in that game. That game takes a long time to play through a full campaign. Um, it's definitely a more of a beast of a game. But if you if you narrow if you like compare the two though, they're both survival games. They're both very hard. They're both kind of like not happy happy fun time. You're gonna lose a lot. You're supposed to lose a lot. This game is designed. You're stranded on an island. And you're gonna die and, and and you're just gonna get killed i don't know if that's the robinson crusoe like I, I never read the book i don't think um but you're on a cursed island you're trying to survive i'm sure that story like things don't turn out great in there i'm sure but um yeah you're not supposed to win so what i think a lot of people who don't like this game and, and the polarizing stuff is that they you know they take the time to set it up shuffle all 35 decks Teach all the players uh who then can't remember all the rules including the person teaching it because it's super fiddly and then they spend the time playing it, which the time learning, the time setting up, and the time playing, there's like a ratio problem there, I think. Like, the game doesn't take that long, I feel. Um, but you, you just end up losing. So it's just like, oh, we lost. And, and, and also the heavy luck dependency. I know there'll be those who argue there's no, not as much luck in it. And I know there's, you know, experienced players who probably know the line of play to always build this, always do that, never do this. You know, on this round, you have to have this built, and by this round, you have to have that built, and you should have this stat here, and you should always use this character with this character. All that stuff that I don't care about right now, that stuff usually exists in games like this, where it's like your best chance for winning is to follow this, like, very set line of play. And I don't know if that's a good design or not, and, and that kind of bugs me too when I find out that some games are like that, where literally you have to, the first three rounds have to be doing the same thing, unless you, or else you just pretty much lose. I don't know if that's what's going on here, but I'm getting that vibe. Lots of luck. So people who just like, you know, feel like it's all going well, and then you roll some weather dice or flip a card, and boom, you're dead kind of thing, um, might not be the game for you. That might not be the game for you. Lots of luck here. Lots of luck. Lots of, lots of card draw from random decks. Lots of dice rolling. Uh, yeah, lots of flipping tiles off decks. Yeah, it's just, just lots of randomness. Tons and tons of randomness. Um, but yeah, do your research. If you don't know what this game is, watch it play today here. Uh, do your research. This may be a game that you find more appealing than maybe my attitude towards it is, or some people in the chat's attitude towards this. Maybe this is perfect for you, but just do your research. Do your research. Uh, just because I'm playing it doesn't mean it's the greatest game ever. Please, please do your research. Uh, let's see. And I see Brian V saying, I think there are better games now that fill the same itch. Yeah, uh, this war of mine. I would honestly, if I were to pick the two so far, again, early, early time. I spent lots of hours with this war of mine just because it's a longer game, obviously. But definitely have played it more multiplayer. I've never played it solo. Um, but this game I've only played solo, so it's like, you know, 
You're the BKK, first time ever joining a live stream uh, ever on the internet uh, is telling me to get started. So I, I think, yeah, sorry, if you have other things to do, you might as well just go do them. Uh, we'll get started in a minute once other people show up, just after they get their notifications. Uh, so we're just going to talk a little bit before we, before we get it going, before we get it set up. Uh, we're, not, we're not trying to just rush through the playthrough here. We're, ch we're chilling, we're chilling. No stress, no stress. Uh, but I see we got the people here. All right, just just trying to chat with the chat too. Let's let's figure out here. Just make sure. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Yes, Pontus, you did just stumble into the start of a stream. I was actually waiting for you. But now that you're here, we can get started. <laughs> yeah, I use that joke all the time. All right. Matush is asking, how's your Arkham content? Will you play Dunwich? Uh, yes, we'll play Dunwich. I just don't know when. Still working in the background and trying to get some cards and find some packs and see if we can uh, get someone's used collection. So that stuff's being worked on. People are busy kind of thing. We're trying to figure it out. Uh, so we'll get there. Uh, and the wife, the wife is working. Graham, I, I know you're new to the channel. Usually in the daytime, my time, like uh, afternoon, uh, during the week, Mel's busy working from home. Sometimes she gets days off. That's why you may have seen her playing with me in the day. Uh, she'll get, she gets holidays. Sometimes she'll join us on stream in the day, but usually it's only evening. Those late streams, uh, are because, you know, that's when she's usually available or on the weekends, uh, which you'll see us playing Star Wars Outer Rim on Sunday afternoon, 1 PM Eastern, uh, this weekend. We also should have a Q and A tomorrow. I'm still just debating what time uh, and if we have time, but I should schedule that later today. If it's going to happen, if not, it'll pop up later in the week. So FYI, we always spend 25 minutes chatting. Chat is right. Yes. It's a li it's live stream 101. Never just start your stream and get into it because YouTube sometimes sends out notifications, sometimes they don't, and people have notifications turned on or follow Twitter and that kind of stuff where I post when I'm going live. I got to give them time to get the notification, you know, get in, in the chat, get here. So that way, when I'm explaining myself at the beginning or talking about the game, you know, it reduces the amount of people later going, what, what, what is this? What is Rob doing? What's going on? What's happening? You know, I don't mind people showing up in the middle of the stream and all that. It's all good. Uh, but if I can wait like five, 10 minutes and it equals to 10, 20 more people coming in and get to catch the beginning, I'll do that. You know, we're not, we're not trying to rush here. And if you're watching this later on YouTube, you can scrub right through this stuff till you see the game on the table and we're flipping cards and stuff, you know? All right, let's get down to it. Okay. So like I said, I have both editions, big joke. Uh, only game I've ever bought twice before playing. Uh, silly, but I'm definitely gonna give this to some friends uh, See if they can put it to use get the PDF for the new rules and, and kind of play it's the same game Literally the same game the rules. I think are 100% the same um, Yeah, so I'm gonna give this to some friends But I, I definitely bought this used if you can find this used for like 20 bucks. You're, you're probably good to just get this version All right so we're playing some Robinson Crusoe adventure on a cursed island. I don't know about an adventure, but uh, basically Robinson Crusoe trying not to die. Okay, so we're going to go through setup again. Third time playing ever. Feel free to chime in. Feel free to give recommendations. The other, the other thing I'm doing with this game, uh, sometimes I play a game a bunch, get to know it very well, and then present it. But this game's been out for a while. Like 2012, literally, people have been playing this for like nine years. Okay, maybe eight or nine years. And this version I'm playing has been out since 2016. It's a very popular game. Lots of people have it. So I'm treating it as such. I'm new. I'm late to the party. I expect there are some people here who've played it a lot. I bet there's some people who've played it a couple times. They don't like it. Maybe, maybe a different look might change their mind, that kind of thing. Um, but I only played it twice. Instead of playing this, you know, many, many, many times for weeks and, and you know, when I had time and then bringing it to the channel, I'm just, I played only twice. I literally have only had it open for like a day and a half. Uh, first time playing was yesterday first time I played was yesterday i played again this morning uh and i have not won and you're not supposed to win i don't think but there are ways to win so feel free to chime in give suggestions ask questions i am going to forget rules i'm going to not know rules i'm going to pull tokens and cards i've never seen before uh expect some goof ups but the cool part we're live so feel free to mention me at rob's gaming table it'll highlight it in my live chat window here and get my attention if there is something you notice I'm not doing or something I'm doing at the wrong time, but this game is fiddly. There's tons of exceptions uh, to everything. So yeah, but I'll try my best. 
uh, to play through it here. And we can all have fun playing together. The advantage of doing this live. So we can all, we can all play it together kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> Dan says, what the heck? Where's my one hour ramp up time? Sorry, we were getting pressure here to get started. I'm sorry. We just had to do it. <laughs> yeah, Successful Geek. I just got this game on sale a month ago. Literally just pulled it out, not yesterday, the day before, and started reading the rules. Uh, it's been sitting in my pile of games to play, but yeah. Yeah, I grabbed it around the holidays too on sale. I figured, I figured it's about time. It's about time I play it. Uh, I got into the hobby actually in 2012. And I remember this game being talked about a lot when I first got into the hobby. And a lot of people had it on their top list right from the get-go. Saying how so, such a great game it is. But very heavy and very fiddly. Uh, and that's what kept me away from it. Just like Mage Knight. I stayed away from that game a long time too uh, in the hobby. But I always wanted it. It always sounded interesting. People always hyped it up. But I was just like, I don't know if I want to want to trudge through these. Again, Mage Knight, this game, both very bad rule books, very bad rule books. They both need like really good learn to play guides. Um, and Mage Knight's not the greatest either, but at least it kind of has a learn to play, you know. But uh, I wish they I wish they both had learn to play guides. This game really needs it. Okay, let's do it. Shelf of opportunity, I love that. Okay, uh, so let's get through the setup. We're gonna set it up all together here. Uh, and just make sure it is done correctly. Oh, we got a new subscriber. Injection. Thank you for injecting your subscription into my channel. I appreciate it. Welcome to Raw's Gaming Table. All right. Okay, so set up. Uh, I got the board in the middle of the table. Yes. Uh, we're playing the castaway scenario. This is the recommended first scenario to play uh, in the game. It's got uh, predetermined stuff we'll go over. We'll talk about this once we're done setting up. Um, but yeah, that's the scenario we're playing. The recommended one. I'm sorry if everyone's played this 400 times. It's super boring. Uh, we'll eventually get into other scenarios. I will try other scenarios in this game on the channel for sure. Uh, and, and multiplayer. We'll play multiplayer of uh, this game on the channel in the future also for sure. Just check if you're watching this like, you know, weeks or months from now. Check the playlist link down in the video description. Uh, and I'll put all the videos for this game in that playlist link or check the playlist section. Uh, that's the plan. Uh, each player draws a character at random or you can alternatively choose your character. We're going to play the, uh, like I said, the carpenter. Okay, we'll talk about the abilities on the carpenter in a sec. Uh, we got two action pawns, a wound marker, and the invention card, the snare. For that character, we'll look at that in a sec. Take all remaining items. So there's a whole bunch of starting items here that have arrows on them. Now you start with, I guess, in every game, like the knife has the little arrows here. We're playing with the knife. Uh, and all these other items, fire, shovel, bricks, medicine, dam, pot, rope, map, all that stuff's here. Then you shuffle the remaining invention cards and place them next to the board. Invention side up. Okay. So there's like this many inventions. So many, so many. Okay. Let's we'll give them a quick shuffle. And then we're going to draw the top five. And place them so you, you can't hide them so i'm gonna just look away but on the back and the front like there's no hiding them so <laughs> i'm just gonna look at the screen while i shuffle so i don't see what i'm doing and then draw one two three four five so this is some of the randomness some of the replayability of mixing it up so still tons of items tons of items you may or may not see in your playthrough super interesting super interesting uh okay finally one black marker on the shovel okay so why that's doing that is because uh, you need a certain terrain type in most cases to build the item like the shovel and spend a build action. So this is telling me I need a beach. Well, in this game, we start with the beach in play. This is our starting location and it has the beach terrain type. So because of that, we fit the, we uh, have fulfilled the prerequisite uh, for building the shovel. So it is telling us put a little black token on it and boom now you know the the requirements have been met so if we need to build a shovel we just throw our dude on there worker placement style and spend an action and we can build that shovel uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. uh place a white marker on the zero space in the morale track done we'll talk about all that stuff place a black marker in the topmost space of the weapon track done Okay, sort the adventure cards by their backs, shuffle each thoroughly. Oh, that's these ones. Okay, yep, yep, yep. All right, so we're just gonna shuffle these. I shuffled them already, but uh, I'll just do a little, little mixing them up on stream here. 
Okay. And this is for when you do a build action, uh, you may have to draw from this. <laughs> Frederick's here. Hi, Rob. Is your last name Crusoe? Didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'll do a little shuffling of these decks. This one's for building. Bad things, I think, usually come out of here. Gathering, bad things. And when you explore the island, bad things, okay? Um, but there's ways to mitigate your drawing from these decks by, by putting two workers to an action, but if you only put one worker in general, uh, you may have to roll dice, which could lead you to drawing one of these cards. And I think I think bad things always happen. At least I feel that's what's happening here. Uh, let me see. Okay, what else we got? So we got all that stuff. Okay. So we need to shuffle the beast cards. Okay, these are the beast cards. These are who you fight. Let's look at a beast. So when you fight a beast, Taking a combat action, you flip it over, you get a bear, for example. Uh, and if you don't have a weapon level equal to or higher than this damage value, you're going to take health loss uh, of the difference. Then you're going to reduce your damage uh, level of your weapon, your strength of your weapon or whatever. Your weapon level gets reduced by a certain amount, sometimes nothing. Uh, and then you can get food. So I could get five food and two pelts or fur or whatever they're called um, in this case. Uh, but on this nice little player reference, it tells you the odds of seeing your beasts. Uh, there's one, one strength, two twos, three threes, three fours, three fives, and four sixes. And hunting a beast will gain you two to five food and zero to two pelts. Okay, so that's that's the hunting deck. Say so it's a random, uh, you can't even hunt until you actually discover some animals, which is kind of cool. I like that mechanic. So this deck just sits off to the side and we only draw and we actually add to a deck on the board. And until there's a card here, you can't hunt. Super interesting. All right, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. shuffle the mystery cards, place them face down next to the board. Okay, mystery cards, sure. Shuffled in this deck, you can find creatures, treasures, and traps, okay? All the good things, all the good things. And you know I'm gonna be going through that deck, if I can, if I can. If we find treasure, you know I'm going for that. Uh, all right. Take the 11 island tiles. Okay, here's the island tiles. We're going to just shuffle these up a bit. And there's, whoops, there's different uh, land types in here. Hills, mountains, rivers. All the things we may need to build things. Uh, you can find animals to send them into this deck. You can find discovery tokens, which I have in a little bag. That you can draw to find wood, food, uh, items, upgrades, uh, or treasures, sorry. What else can you find in there? Um, you can find little builder guys to help you and stuff. Again, I haven't seen every token, so uh, I'm just going by what I've seen already. So we're going to see some surprise things on here, especially those who haven't played, obviously. Uh, okay. Oh, place the camp token. So I put this tile out, like I said, the beach tile. Uh, and then I put our camp on here. And this is like where we are. Uh, and you can eventually build a shelter here to help protect you uh, a little bit. Uh, but for now, it just it's our like home base is that one tile. So we'll have to explore out from there. Uh, shuffle the discovery tokens. So like I said, I put the discovery tokens. They're in this bag. So we'll just draw from here. Uh, they're like re a little round tokens. And uh, they have this symbol on them. And it'll tell you in a game, when you see this symbol, you go draw as many as you see of this symbol. And then you kind of get stuff, whoa, you get stuff on the back. Uh, so this I could redeem for a treasure, which I'd draw through this deck to find my first treasure. Uh, that kind of thing. Okay, so that's just off to the side. Uh, we got all the resources. Wreckage card. So we start with one wreckage card uh, in this game. It's like a special card. It's like an event card, but it's like a starting card. Event cards usually have this back here, a black back uh, with a green flag. This is blue with yellow. Uh, so we're starting with some food crates. You notice food, food crates scattered along the shore. And you could, you could put some workers here. You could put, like, for example, one worker here and you get one food. Or two workers here, you get a food and a non-perishable food. Uh, and then you discard this card. Uh, and this has like this little track system uh, where events kind of fill up this two-space track here. So eventually this will slide to the right and, and another event card will come here. And these cards, uh, and when you go to put a third one, the left one slides off, uh, indicated by this arrow here. 
and then you kind of deal with what's at the bottom. So at least it's nice. This first one's given us food, possibly. But if we ignore it and don't don't solve it, kind of, and, and dedicate some resources to it, nothing happens. Nothing happens. But for example, these bad event cards, usually bad, I think, uh, do a bad thing sometimes or a good thing. Then they go down in the spot. Then you have to deal with them. So this one, a worker and a shovel is needed. You could discard this card and you get this, uh, this special token you can use for your character abilities. But look, if I ignore it, during the production phase of this round, you get no wood. So if I ignore this thing and it slides off this track and I don't deal with it, uh, you get punished. So that's... The first one's kind of nice. The first one's kind of nice. Oh man, everything's trying to punish you. <laughs> everything's trying to punish you. It's all about like evaluating uh, where to put your resources and sometimes it's still a gamble and yeah, that's all I know. But oh, uh, George A is here. For solo play, you might want to instead take a different wreckage card. I didn't know you could do that. I know there are other ones, but it just tells you to use that one. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Watch out for the smoke monster. Oh man, am I playing Lost the board game? Oh, -ho! <laughs> oh man, I love that show <laughs> till the last season. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, that was a great show. Bernardo's here. Greetings from the island. Stabbing my fingers, stabbing my legs with poisonous plants, eating bad berries, fighting jaguars, and sleeping cold and hungry in the rain. But having a great time. Yeah, that's that's. How did you see the future? This is like what's going to happen today for sure. Uh, okay, so uh, what's happening with these cards is kind of weird. So these are like the event cards. We're going to start out the round by dealing uh, or drawing one of these. And like I said, they go into this little track down here. We'll deal with them. You'll see it on the second round. But to build the deck, you take six of each type of card. So there are cards that could uh, that have these little question mark symbols that basically force drawing from these decks by using these tokens. So if ever there's a token on the back of these decks, if you do the action, either build, uh, gather, or explore, instead of rolling a die, in some cases, where you might draw a card, this makes you draw a card. I, I think it makes you draw a card even if you don't roll a dice. I can't remember exactly. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but what this is doing is making it more likely that you're gonna draw a card and something bad will happen. And then the crazy part is some of these um, are, are good. Some of them do good things. I don't know. And then this one, the other half of the deck. So there's a half of the deck, same deck, that has symbols uh, that relate to the, the different uh, scenarios. In this scenario, it has no effect if it's a book. So it's being gentle-ish. But I'm sure that's usually a bad thing. So we're going to shuffle these up. We draw six cards out of each. And then we shuffle those together to create 12, 12 cards. Uh, oh, you guys are doing the castaway references. Wilson, yeah, yeah. Ah, I haven't seen that movie in so long. That's like Tom Hanks, right? Tom Hanks with the uh, Wilson volleyball. <laughs> it may, so Faulty Joe, it, you draw a card regardless of rolling. Perfect, okay, perfect, thank you guys. Yeah, I just couldn't remember, but yeah, that's what these do to you, so you kind of don't want to see these, but we will see them, I'm sure. But that's, that's what that's doing here. So uh, let's draw six cards. Whoops. Okay, we're gonna draw one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we'll throw these off to the side. And out of this pile, the ones with the, you know, the question mark symbols. And this is part of how you make the game easier or harder. Uh, they say you can tweak the amount of these cards. Um, I forget, in the, in the first scenario, you want more books to make it easier because they don't do anything. But I think in other scenarios, you want less books, I think because they do stuff, I, I don't remember, but something like that. But anyways, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then you shuffle this up. So see the replayability here just in this deck, okay? Like, look how many cards we're not playing with of each type, like it's insane. So what you can't, it's like, this is the luck and randomness factor I was saying before, like, it's not like you're just gonna like draw through the deck and you'll see the same cards in just different order. It's like, you may play like 10 times and not see cards you have in the box, like, and you just don't know, like you don't know. So it kind of changes up the story a little bit every time. You know, sometimes the, you could be punished more. I found, I, in the two times I played, one time I got punished a lot on the build action where like a lot of bad cards related to build actions. Then the next time I played, it wasn't really like that. It was like the hunt action kept getting, you know, pounded with things that, that were hitting me, raising the, 
the damage of the enemies like three or four times that happened in the same game. I was like, wow, this is different. Um, so yeah, and it's really neat how the replayability is in this game with no expansions. No expansions. Uh, Real Aret says, Rob, your setup walkthrough here is outstanding. I know your first play, but you're killing it thus far, my friend. <laughs> I'm trying to understand the game. I've read the rules only twice, but I feel like I got most of it down, but I will be looking up like tokens that I haven't seen in cards, I'm sure. Uh, that's the only thing. I think I have the rules now, but again, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so we're going to throw this up here. This is our events. I'm also trying to explain the game because I know there's people here who have probably never seen this game before, uh, or people find this later on YouTube. At least you can watch the first little bit and see how the game works, and then you'll see it played. Uh, that's the idea. But this is not a full tutorial. Like I said, I'm new like you. If you're watching this video and you're like, found this on YouTube and you're like, man, I'm going to watch this guy. He's going to teach me how to play. Yeah, you might learn the castaways thing, how it kind of works. But I probably won't see everything or have every like little rule happen, right? Uh, you'll have to play a few times to see everything. Or there's some tutorial videos out there, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, all right. But thank you for the kind words. Cynthia says, don't hunt. Uh-oh. Oh, well, George is saying priorities. So basically your priorities would be getting map and shortcut and hatchet. Do I have shortcut? I do. And this isn't always in every game, right? This is, I, I saw this in one game, but I didn't use it. And again, I don't know all the cards. I don't know all the strategies. Again, I just played for fun. Tried to figure it out. I tried to see, I tried to see if I could beat it in my first try. I felt I was so close. I got to the point where the weather dice... If I rolled them and only saw like two clouds, I think I would have made it. But I saw, I think, four. And it was enough to like destroy the wood so I didn't have enough wood to put on the last pile. Uh, and, and it caused me to lose a health or something. And I died. But if it was just like two less clouds, I think, I would have had enough wood still, would have still been alive. Start the next round. As long as the event didn't tank me, production would have been able to throw wood on the pile. I know some of you don't know what this means yet, but... I would have had it, I feel, in my first play. I was so excited. So I tried it again. I tried a few different things just to, like, you know, test the system. Uh, but I have not beat this game. I've not figured it out. But shortcut, uh, George is saying here, but I think it's a token on any tile adjacent to your camp. During the production phase, you get one chosen resource available on that tile. Yeah, that's my problem. I never feel like I have enough wood, even with the carpenter. I don't know. So let's talk about this a little more. Uh, so we're playing Castaways. How about the setup? Yes. Okay. So we're playing castaways. Uh, we're going to use a little wooden token and we're going to track the rounds. Okay. Eventually the rounds get worse. Uh, these are weather dice. So in rounds four, five, and six, we're going to be rolling this rain die, which if our camp's not prepared, we might be burning wood to stay warm in the snow. If there's snow, uh, we might be needing a roof over our head and a certain strength of roof to handle the amount of rain or snow we're going to see. So you'll see that in the weather phase. I'll explain that more in detail when it happens. Uh, and then eventually, when we move on to rounds 7 through 12, uh, we will be rolling all three of these dice, which this one leads to lots more snow, lots more rain. Uh, and this one can destroy palisades we've built around our camp. Uh, could do nothing. It could make us have to fight a three strength enemy or the good old uh our food just disappears and that's not good when they're taking your food away that could lead to you starving and learning losing health lots of ways to lose health in this game uh so in this scenario your castaways on a desert island it is the end of summer you should prepare for winter build build a shelter a roof a palisade it will be difficult to survive during the tough months of autumn and winter you also have to build a pile of wood so you can light it on fire when you spot a ship on the horizon to call for help, okay? That's this right here. So we see our ship comes in round 10, 11, and 12, okay? If in any of those rounds, we have put enough wood uh, in all these levels to build up this pile of wood and have fire built, we light this on fire and the ship is here, we've signaled them and we win, okay? Whenever that those two things happen and they line up, you win. If you reach the end of the game, and you haven't built this fire, uh, you lose. Uh, or if you just die, run out of health, you lose. <laughs> uh, and there's other ways too. Uh, so the goal of the scenario, you need to build a fire item and a wood pile box below. Uh, fire item is a default item. Okay, we have to find mountains first. 
Then we can build the fire, which gives us a bump to our palisade. And then you flip it over and boom, you have fire. So as long as we have this card flipped over and built, and we've dedicated enough wood to this pile, a winner is us. But uh, I've yet to see that happen. I'm sure there's many of you that also have never seen that happen. Uh, building the wood pile. So the wood pile requires 15 wood markers to complete and, can, and you can only put wood on the pile before the action phase of each round. We'll talk about the phases in a second with the exception of the mast and the oil. So these are two items that are tied to the scenario. You can build these once and one will help you generate, generate more wood at your camp tile, which is great. We've got to get that early, obviously, to pump more resources. But we need to see mountain first and we need to have some wood to build this to then get more wood. And the mast you can build as long as you have the rope made, some wood and a fur. And you can get three more wood, and it'll throw it only on the wood pile, though. You can't use this wood for anything else. Okay? Uh, the pile must be completed in stages from left to right. You can place any amount of wood onto the pile in a round, but only in one stage per round. Okay? So, for example, first round, I can spend one wood, but then I can't spend a couple more wood and start filling up this one. For example, if these had wood filled in them, so let's say the first one was filled. I could in the following round put like one wood in here, no problem. And then if I put like, you know, I try to put three more wood in there to fill it up and spill over. It won't spill over. There's no spill over. And you can only work on one pile in a round. So I think even if you have tricky ways to throw plus three wood on the pile, outside of the normal time you do it, you still only can work on one pile in each round. So do not wait till round 10 to start putting wood on here because one, two, three, four, five rounds minimum to build this thing, uh, and that's not enough. So you need to start building it somewhere here at the latest so you have it all built and on fire before the, uh, before the ship comes. And you can't take wood back off of here. Okay, that's what we're working on. There are little tokens hidden in that black bag, and uh, four of them change per the scenario you're playing. So we can find herbs for health, oil for more wood for the pile, a pirate saber to boost up our weapon strength, and some discovery tokens, uh, a medallion of the lady. So these change based on the scenario you're playing. I think if I turn this over, uh, this is the Cursed Island scenario, scenario two. Uh, for example, they have all different things that can happen based on those exact same tokens you'll pull. So no additional setup, um, but you do find other things happen in that scenario. And look, uh, two other items. So we'll play this in the future and try this out for this game. Um, but we're playing this one, so it's like it's very thematic and changes up based on the scenario. Uh, oh yeah, and the book, no effect, and if we see this symbol, it has no effect for this scenario. But if we look at this scenario, it has a whole thing going on here. And where's the other one? Oh, right here. Look at, look at, the book comes up, you gotta do all this crap. Uh, but on this side, it's keeping it easy, because this is like the tutorial scenario, uh, sort of. Uh, I wouldn't really call it like a tutorial scenario, it doesn't feel like that. Feels like a pretty beefy game. Um, it's not definitely not a learn to play walkthrough scenario with like very like very toned down rules. You're playing like with all the stuff here. It feels like, and then we put a round marker on round one. Okay. <clears throat> uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, this sheet's better. Bernardo has a first edition. Yeah, we we're just talking about that actually. Where did that go? Oopsie. <laughs> this sheet. <laughs> Here's the first edition version. So yeah, a little, a little different, you can see. But a lot, like it's very similar though. But again, it, it's, it's made for cubes. Made for cubes. I don't know what this is all about here, but. Victory points. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Again, I've never played the first edition. I just own it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I never really compared it either. Other than the rule book reference. So let me tell you how crappy this is. So here's our second edition back of a giant rule book. Okay. Uh, you know, it's got these icons here and it's kind of like explaining, you know, what they are. But like, I don't know, it doesn't really tell you what, what they do. So it's kind of weird, like, it just tells you, like, the name of what they are. But it's like, it doesn't even tell you the page to look up information about them on, or give you any information on the back. Uh, this one, I feel like it does a little better job. This is the older version. 
No, maybe, yeah, maybe it does. Yeah, look at this, look at this. Okay, additional food token, additional wood token, time consuming action token, okay? This is the old version, minus one pawn. Okay, that makes more sense. Plus one wood, plus one food. Okay, things like that. Like this explains more, there's more text here. I don't know, Z-Man versus Portal Games. I, I don't know what's going on here, but Portal Games, you're lazy, bro. You're lazy, like, th like, thanks. Thanks for telling me that's a wound. Like, you know, like why does it need to take up this much space for literally naming what these things are? I feel like this is a big waste of the back of this book. It's like inside they, th they throw a little game overview. Like this would have been better on the back of the book. I, I don't know. That's, that's something that annoys me a lot. It's like lazy, pure laziness. Um, but yeah. Anyways. All right. <laughs> Velco says almost 70 viewers. We can help you or you get killed fast. No, we'll take our time at dying. Don't worry. We'll take our time at dying. <laughs> it was done in Excel. <laughs> All right. Uh, so on your turn, let's take a look at this. Uh, this is probably the best way to flow through it. I like, I, I definitely like this player aid though. Uh, they give you this player aid to walk you through the turns. And we have it right here. Let's zoom it in. Okay, actually. Oh. All right, so first round of the game is, like I said, the event. You draw a card, you deal with what it says to do, then you put it down in this little track, and if it falls off, bad things happen if you don't deal with it in time, okay? Then you do morale. Uh, we're at zero morale. We're playing solo. So there's a little altered rule where your morale goes up by one, uh, I guess to kind of help with the balance. And you then draw a uh, determination token, I believe it's called. Let me check the back to find out if that's what it's called. <laughs> yes, determination token. Thank you, back of book. All right. Let me see what it says on the other book, though. Uh, nope, still just a determination token. <laughs> Nothing special. Because those line up with your abilities. So your abilities, uh, so we're playing the Carpenter, I should go over this. Uh, you have Economical Construction. So you can discard two of those tokens to spend one fewer wood during any uh, action of, uh, during one action of any type. When you use an ability, uh, it's once per round, you should cover it up with a token to show it's been used, okay? Uh, the second ability she has is Craftsmanship. Discard two of those tokens to reroll any brown die during a build action, okay? Uh, you could discard three of those tokens to draw five invention cards. That's these cards. So we drew five at random, but we could draw five more from this deck, uh, choose one, and put it on the board. I don't know if you... The way George is saying we need to build the shortcut, I, I don't know if that's like something... Should I have been digging for that shortcut if it wasn't here? Uh, using those tokens? I, I don't know. These are the things I was, I was puzzled with when I was playing. Because I don't, I don't know the items. I don't, I don't know what's all in all the decks, right? So I don't know what I'm looking for. Um, and then Handyman, discard three of those tokens to get an additional guy for a build action. Okay, so how that works, uh, you have these, these are your pawns, these are like your workers. Uh, I have two, two orange ones here as the builder, okay? Those are my two workers, okay? If, if I place, uh, to let's say build the shovel with one worker, I then have to roll these gamble dice. And this die tells me whether I succeed on that action or not. So if I get these, I get some of those determination tokens, which again, I can spend on my player abilities. Um, but if I get this little wishbone, uh, I succeed, or a V for victory, I don't know what that is, but I think it's a wishbone. Um, but you succeed, okay? So it's a gamble. If I only put one pawn here, I'm gambling, okay? If I put two, I'm using two workers, which scares me in all worker placement games, why you'd put two workers on the same place, I don't know. You never want to do it, but in this game, you gotta it's you gotta do it if you want to succeed for sure. Otherwise, you could fail and get some tokens. You could also have to draw from that deck of fun stuff down here, or you might miss on it. Okay, you might get a blank. And the third die, and these dice are all very similar. There's green and gray based on the other two actions of gathering and exploring. We'll talk about those. Uh, but you also can get a wound. There's a deck here literally just to damage you uh, if you roll. So it's like you could put two workers there or you can roll these dice, maybe fail, maybe get some determination, uh, maybe get wounded, and maybe draw from this deck. Whole bunch of random maybes. 
Uh, yeah, it's scary. And I don't know the balance in this game of when to do this and risk it and when not. I don't know what's in all these decks. And like I said, there are these decks, man, like you don't know. You could play and you don't know which one you're going to draw. You don't know what you're going to see every time you play. The decks are pretty large. So handling what could come out of them, I don't know. That's what play experience will come with playing over and over again, kind of learning what the decks do. I think it's part of the fun. I don't want to flip them over and read every card in there. I think it's fun to just play blind. Um, but for the dice, they put on the back of this reference sheet uh, the values. So if you look here, they have different distributions of dice results. So it looks like if you roll the green question mark die, you're most likely going to draw a green card no matter what. But it's like 50-50 to draw a question mark card there, adventure card or whatever, um, rolling the dice for either a build or a gather. Okay, uh, which is neat. So that's how that works. Uh, so that explains the building guy. So you can also, instead of just playing two of your workers, you could play one of your workers and her ability, which I showed you, gets you an extra builder, basically gives you another worker that you can only use to support yourself so you don't have to roll dice, in most cases, by getting an extra worker on the space. And then you can use your other worker to go do something else like exploring. The same thing applies. If I go there by myself to explore, I'm going to be rolling the green dice, I might get wounded, I might fail, and I might draw from this stupid deck. I mean, this fun deck. Okay? Uh, and then I'll flip a random tile and fill it up. Okay, so we talk about building. We'll go a little more. Building is a little more complex than that, uh, or more options, I should say. But exploring is basically expanding the map and dealing with this green deck, possibly, and, and putting guys over here. Okay. Uh, actually, let's go back to that reference sheet. That, that'll make more sense. So I was on morale. Let's go back to the morale. So morale was to get those tokens to eventually give me abilities to help me do things in the game with actions, basically, at least with the carpenter. Okay. Uh, so that was morale. So you check your morale level, then you get some of those tokens, okay? If your morale level is going down, you must lose those tokens, and if you don't have enough to pay the piper, you take damage for the difference, okay? So if I am running out of these tokens, let's say I have only two, I have only two of these determination tokens, and I'm at minus three. Again, it's solo, so I'd always go up one, so this will never, a bad example. But let's say I only had one. Uh, I have to lose two. I can only lose one. So then what I must do is take a damage. And damage is tracked on the bottom of your character sheet here in these hearts. Okay. And an interesting little thing, as the damage goes across, so you start with a little red cube here. And as it goes across, if you cross this line, that's a symbol for morale. You actually have to pull morale down one more. Okay. So as you get wounded and you're bleeding all over everyone's stuff at the camp, uh, morale starts to go down. Okay. Control your blood. That's basically what you gotta do. <laughs> uh, so that's how that works. All right, so that's morale. So it starts at zero, but because we're playing solo, it goes up one at the start of every morale phase going forward to kind of help you out. <laughs> volleyball plus paint equals win. Yes, Pontus, yes. <laughs> is, there, is there a volleyball card in this game? If there's not, big fail, big fail. There should be some kind of Wilson card in this game for sure. Uh, if not, there's probably a promo. There's got to be a promo of that. It has to be. All right. Uh, production. So in the production phase, you basically look on your camp tile. Okay, so this is our camp tile. And you'll get the resources that are on there. So this is a food and a wood. Okay, if I was on a tile that had only food, I would only get one food. But in this case, where my camp is right now, I get a food and a wood. There are ways to buff that up. For example, we build the hatchet in this scenario. We could put one of these tokens on there and we would get two wood in the production phase from our camp tile. Okay, that's how that works. Uh, then we have actions. This is the meat and potatoes of the game. This is the main course, uh, which I, I don't know if main course is meat and potatoes. I don't know what it's saying. Shouldn't be eating main, meat and potatoes too often, I don't think. But anyways, um, threat action requirements on the card. Uh, so, oh, how this works in order. I can explain this better than this, uh, I think. All right, so when you're in the action phase, you basically do planning, then you, you know, resolve your actions. So planning is literally working with the players or yourself if you're solo and just putting your workers out everywhere. In this game, we are also, because we're playing, uh, if you're playing two or one player, you play with Friday, this little guy, he doesn't draw question mark cards, he just takes a wound if he has to. He doesn't worry about shelter, he doesn't eat, he doesn't care about weather, um, but he does have only three-ish, four-ish health, I guess, and then he dies. 
And he can spend those tokens uh, to reroll action dice. But he's like a little worker that can kind of help you do things. He's kind of like equivalent to my main pawn, my character. But if he's ever with me, he has to support. Okay, he can't be the top guy to take the wound. So if you're the top of uh, two or more workers, uh, the damage and rewards and everything kind of happen to the top player. So you can never just hide behind this guy kind of thing. But you can send him on his own, and he could do some exploring, for example, or he can do some building. Uh, but you just can never be under him supporting him. Okay, so that's how that whole support thing works. Uh, which you'll see some of this stuff. I'm not explaining it. It's, you'll see it as we go through it. Um, and then... Because we're playing solo, we also have the dog. This guy works as like one of those neutral guys, like those builder guys I showed you. Um, and he can only support. He can't do anything on his own. And he can only help you in exploring and hunting. Okay. So those are those guys there. So I basically have like three and a half workers uh, playing solo. Because I, I think this game is more balanced for two players. So they give you this kind of stuff to help it kind of still be like a two player game. Uh, even if you're playing true solo. Or no, three player balance, I think. Because when you're playing two players, you still need to play with Friday. So that's how I think it's balancing. And then, and then the single players are giving the morale bump to kind of balance it for the three player uh, design, I guess. Okay, so you basically assign your actions. You can assign uh, characters, like I said, to this threat deck to deal with threat, okay? You can assign people to hunt, which we looked at the animal. You assign a guy there. You have to assign two workers minimum. To deal with this you can assign two sets of two workers in a little support structure to do two hunts for example uh, but you need a, a card here to even hunt okay then building building like i said you can build these inventions as long as you have the requirements so the requirement has to be covered on the card so most of them we have to find you know some terrain type that we have to explore but you also can build your shelter and the cost for two player and solo is two wood or one fur to build anything up here, okay? Like any level of it. So the shelter, once it's built, you just flip it and you've built the shelter, okay? To uh, build a roof, every level of the roof, including going from zero to one, costs you either two wood or one fur uh, to get your roof built up and that helps protect you against weather. Palisades, so your big wooden, you know, fences or whatever, it keeps the animals out kind of idea. Uh, they, bo they both can go like unlimited. They both cost the same to build levels of them. And then the weapon level, it, literally, it just costs one wood per level. So our weapon level starts at zero, uh, but you want to get that weapon level up and that will help protect you against hunting. Uh, it'll help you hunt without taking so much damage. And it can also protect you from things in the game that just try to you know attack you and fight you and kill you and that kind of stuff. Um, and the game will be trying to wear down your weapons. It will be trying to destroy your palisades. It'll be trying to destroy your roofs. Uh, your shelter stays though, I think. But the game is constantly, you're on an island, you're, you're stranded, and weather and, and stuff is just, just getting you. Okay? Uh, and gathering is another action you can do. I think that was all the build stuff. I think it was all the build stuff. Oh yeah, you can build these things, uh, these items that are for the scenario. Gathering just means going out of your camp to an adjacent tile, or an, even further if you want to spend more workers. Uh, to gather a resource on that tile just to get more of it. That's as simple as that goes. You can put one or two worker again, roll the dice if you only have one. Um, exploring is just like I showed before, putting a worker out on an empty adjacent space and expanding the map, which you'll see in action. You can also uh, arrange the camp, which gets you the determination tokens, two of them, and raises your morale. But like some of the people in chat have been saying, solo you kind of don't really need to do that because it's automatically raising your morale all the time and, and therefore you're getting tokens. So I feel like this action is kind of a waste uh, in solo. And then you have the rest action. So you can go here with just one worker also, uh, and you raise your health, like heal some wounds based on how many are here. Then, once you're done the action phase, all right. Then in the action phase, so anything you earn in that action phase goes in this future resource box up here, the top half, and then you would slide it down when you're done the action phase to the available resources. It's this way so you can't, kind of like in this War of Mine 2 where like you can't find stuff and use it on the very next action kind of thing, you have to wait for it to come around to another round to spend those resources. So it's like kind of delayed effect. 
like when the people go out in this war mine, like, um, you know, scavenging or whatever, uh, you can't use any of their stuff until they like brought it back, put it in the inventory, you know, then you can, then you can use it the next day kind of idea. Um, so weather, we talked about rolling the weather, but it says here, so for each snow you get, you got to burn some wood to keep warm. For every cloud you roll on the dice, you got to compare it to your roof level. Any difference there? So if you have a level three roof and you roll four clouds, you will have to destroy one food and one wood. And if you're missing a food or a wood, uh, you have to lose health for each. Okay. Uh, there's some storm token that decreases your palisades level. I've never seen that. Uh, and the hungry animal we talked about already uh, on the weather dice. And then there's the night phase to wrap it up where we can move our camp to an adjacent island tile. There's some rules with that. If you've built the shelter, you lose some of your roof and palisades half rounded up. So it weakens your stuff because you disassemble your, your shelter and you have to move it and rebuild it. But I guess on the way, some people got lazy and dropped some things. Uh, so you don't have it as strong. But if you haven't built a full shelter and you just have a natural shelter, which is weird, uh, you lose all of your roof and all your palisades you built. Um, and then you have to discard one food or you get two wounds per player. So we have to spend one food to eat at the end of every day in the night phase or we suffer two wounds. And if you don't have a shelter, you get a wound. So you have to build that shelter or otherwise we're just going to be bleeding all over the floor. Uh, and then you discard all remaining food that's perishable or else it's just gone. So any extra food's a waste. And that's it really okay all right so it's just that you play those rounds over and over again until we've satisfied our goal of building that wood pile starting a fire and when the boat shows up in rounds 10 11 or 12 we have that fire pile built i've never built it yet i never got it all the way i've got it till i had like two or three wood on the last pile and i've had the fire built i just died before i could complete it or my wood kept getting lost in the storms all right so we guys <laughs> all right let's get started your ocd oh is the map too far off graham you, you, it's cut off or what or, or my logo over <laughs> okay so i start with the snare uh but again i have to build it so it's like my personal item i need the rope I can dedicate someone here, and then I get plus one food on my camp tile. Okay, so that's an option. That's just something over here. And if I build it, I get two determination tokens. I've never built it before. I don't know if I should be building it. Um, but I felt like I usually had enough food until the storms came rolling in, which maybe is what I needed so I prevented health loss by having extra food. I don't know. Again, all help is appreciated. All right, I think everything is good to go and set up. So the first round, we skip the event phase. Okay, and we go right to morale. Solo, we bump this up, and it's on level one. So we get our first determination token. Okay, we'll just put that on our character board here. Uh, what's next? We need production phase. Okay, we get a wood and a food. Because we're playing the super duper second edition, our wood is not little yellow, uh, our brown cubes, and our food's not yellow cubes. We have bananas and little wood things. I don't know, little logs, or 2 by 4s whatever those are. What did you say? No, Rob. It's that turned over corner on the map. Oh, this! <laughs> ah, that's awesome. I thought you meant like the corner is cut off on the screen or something. I'm like, there's nothing on there, but... <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, all right. So then next, uh, and yes, I am off screen looking at this to keep me, keep me going, but feel free if I miss something to let me know. Um, but yes, action phase. So here's where we assign our workers, uh, starting off first, we do not have enough wood. I want to build a shelter quick, right? Because we're losing health every night, but, uh, we don't have enough wood or fur to build that shelter. And I don't have enough determination tokens. I could use two determination tokens to replace the wood, but I don't have that. I don't know if there's any way you really can build it the first round. I'm sure there's a way. Um, but George was saying, what were we saying, George? Do the map then. Uh, George was saying before. Can't really afford the shovel. I'm doing a lot of event actions. You don't have the pawns. 
Okay, that's why I've been playing like that. I haven't been doing anything fancy. I'm trying to keep it. You wouldn't want to hunt on one player. Hunt gives a lot of food, which you don't need. Ah. Yeah, I was doing hunts just to get fur so that I was building levels of my roof and, for example, my shelter or palisades without having to waste wood. I would use the fur. But I got lucky and I always draw like a four or less animal. But I know there's sixes in there and that's, that, would, that would like destroy me. So I'm, I'm avoiding building weapons then? Like, is that the case? Early on, anything that gives you plus pawns or plus resources per turn is best. Okay, what other tips you guys got in here? The basic priority is beginning the map, then shortcut and hatchet. So first round, explore everything. That's what I did, okay. I, I was gonna say that first round, I always just explore all three of these tiles because they just give you a bunch of stuff. It feels like, they always just give you stuff. All right, I'm going with that. I thought it was crazy. That's what I did my very first game. I was like, because I could use the dog. I could do like this, right? I could like explore, explore, and explore. I don't know if I should be exploring like this though. On my second playthrough, I did it like this, but my first playthrough, I just kind of explored like that. I don't, I don't know if I should be leaving this guy by himself and instead trying to protect myself by using the dog. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. Oh, Animation Raptors here. <laughs> hello, hello, Fred. How's it going? Uh... So Matt's saying risk versus reward, Rob. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, but it's like I'm looking at it as action economy too, right? Like, there is risk to it by spreading out and getting more done. But do I need to, or will I run out of actions in the turns? Like, part of the game feels like a race, so it feels like I need to do a bunch of spread out and get a lot done. But then I feel like that just kills you faster, unless you get so lucky on every dice roll. But it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. So I, I don't know. I, like. I think I want to protect this guy because he only has like the four health and he gets a damage anytime he has to draw a card. So like, I don't really want him rolling dice. Matt saying, Matt B is saying, explore and move your camp to the center of the board to give yourself access to more space. Okay, perfect. I've done that before. That's the way I kind of played it. Tiny, until two days ago, I had this game on my shelf in Shrink, and I had the first edition on my shelf for a year and never touched it, and even bought the second one. I was making a joke about you earlier. Uh, it was the first game I ever bought two copies of and still haven't played the game. <laughs> and you know all about that, don't you? <laughs> uh, I was just showing these as a demo. These are not really on this space. Okay. So, uh... Yeah, let's do <laughs> uh, Okay, let's play it safe. Let's play it safe. I don't know. No, let's do this. Let's spread it. Let's spread it. Let's see. We'll show off the dice rolling stuff. We'll see my frustration. It'll be great. Okay, so now that we've placed all our workers, that's all we have. We literally resolve in order. So first, uh, we resolve the event stuff. Nobody's here. Okay, we're good. Hunt. No one's home. A okay, building. Any building stuff happening? Nope. Next, we go uh, gathering. Nope, no gatherings happening. We don't even have a place next to our camp to even gather any resources yet, but we are exploring. Okay, so we can resolve this one first. We can resolve them in any order you want. Let's just resolve this one. So we'll put the dog back and Friday back and we just succeed on it. I don't have to roll dice. I don't have to draw from a deck that I know of. Uh, so we just resolve it. So we're going to get one of these tiles. Okay, uh, and what do we get? Okay, we got a uh, planes maybe it looks like. And it's gonna give us uh, a place that we could gather food from. An animal hunt, uh, an animal to our hunt deck, and then three of these discovery tokens. Ooh. But I don't, I don't know if that's the best place to put the camp though, cause it doesn't have wood on it. So I don't think that's a good place to put it. But hopefully we find wood and food on one of these other two, and maybe we can move the camp to there. Uh, so we get three of these tokens. 
and we get an animal in the hunt deck. So now we officially could go hunt if we wanted to. Uh, first token we got, oh, this one's a nice one. Large leaves, so it can help cancel a weather uh, cloud result off the dice in the uh, weather phase at some point. We might need to use that, so we'll save that. And you can just hold on to that and spend it when you want kind of thing. Uh, we got one of those scenario specific tokens, which this one is... Uh, Medallion of a Lady, so you can get three determination tokens uh, when we cash that in. But again, it's going into the future resources, so you can't spend it now in this action phase. At the end of the action phase, everything in the future will slide down. Uh, so we can't touch any of that stuff yet. And then, uh, an old machete, which can bump up our weapon level. Okay. Next, let's resolve this one, the top one here. Uh, so first, let's see if we even succeed. And we're going to roll these amazing dice. Okay, so uh, first, we take a wound. Uh, I think. I don't know what order it all happens in. I don't think it matters really, but um, we succeed and we draw cards. So let's just draw the card. We got a thorny bush. You got scratched by thorny bushes. Your arm burns. So we put one of these wound tokens on your character's arm, then you shuffle this in the event deck. So these, these tokens, uh, these are like special wounds, and it goes on the arm space on our character's picture right here. And then this gets shuffled in the event deck, and when this comes out, you've got an infection and you can't work today. If you don't have medicine, so that's an item, uh, this item right here, if we don't have medicine built, Oh yeah, I forgot to cover up. I forget to cover up. Yeah, medicine we can build actually. Because we have that type. Also we can build rope. And I think that's it. Yeah. So those are the requirement types because we saw planes. That's what need is needed to build rope. And that's what's needed to build medicine. So we cover those up to show that we could build those in a future turn. Uh, but when this comes out, if you don't have medicine, uh, the character with that wound on their arm has only one uh, of their workers available this round. And you discard that token. Then you draw another card. Okay, so this goes into here. Which is weird. So weird that it's like a different pack. Uh, so we'll just shuffle it without looking. And when it comes up we deal with it, but we still have to do an event card right after. What? Matt B says you're not supposed to draw the card yet, just put a token on the deck. Really? No. This just puts a token on the deck? Oh, I've been playing. Okay, I just learned something new. No way, really? Maybe that's why it's so hard. <laughs> uh, so I'm glad to play with you guys on stream. Uh, no, I thought... I didn't think that's how it worked. Where does it say that? No, no, look, look. The topmost adventure card is drawn from its respective deck and the top part's resolved. Like, this is what it tells me right in the rules. Is that like a house rule that you guys play with or it's from first edition? Yeah, okay, so I am doing it correctly. Man, I reread those rules twice. I'm like, I never noticed that. Uh, where's the dice in here? This is a first edition rule book. Maybe, maybe there's something in here that makes it confusing? Nope. Literally the exact same thing. You roll a question mark, draw the top adventure card from the deck and resolve it. How do you mess that one up? <laughs> Matt, it's okay if that's how you're playing your game. You do what you want, it's your game. You play it how you want, you spent the money. 
But yes, okay, so I am doing it right. For those that are watching, okay. I was like, oh my god. That would have made the game a lot easier, I think, right? Because you just put a token on there, and you don't have to do that action again sometimes, right? So that token might just sit there forever. Okay, so we're good, we're good. Okay, we're playing right. All right, I was like, whoa. Uh, yeah, that could break the game. <laughs> yeah, if I draw a card from this, it puts a token on there. But this is different, this is different. Again, using the same symbol, probably a bad idea, right? Question mark. But the other one shows a circle, so I don't know. Okay, so we did that right. Uh, we succeeded. Let's take this back. Uh, and we're going to draw another tile. And we got hills. And another animal. We get two determination tokens. Again, this symbol does nothing in this scenario. Okay. Uh, another animal to the hunt deck. Okay. And two determination. <laughs> get out of here, Dan. <laughs> so, what do we get? Uh, candles, so we can get one of these little temporary workers to help us out for one action. And some tobacco, which supposedly makes morale go up. Uh, I don't agree with that, but sure. Sure, sure. Sure, sure. Okay. I guess before they realize science, you know, and tobacco and... I guess it's just plain tobacco. Maybe it's not that bad, but. Jordan J says, the chat mob is 100% efficient. Matt was just being a lone voice of dissent. <laughs> mob requires maturity. <laughs> no, it's all good. A again, no offense taken. If you think I'm doing something wrong, question it, please. Because not only we have to find out if I'm doing it wrong, and if I've been doing something wrong, it doesn't help anyone else watching this video later. But if you bring up some issue that maybe is a misunderstood rule, sometimes you might be correct, and I'm playing wrong, or sometimes you'll be wrong, and then now I helped you out in your game. But like, it's a two-way street here, so you have people in the chat. If you're unsure about something I'm doing, feel free to call me out on it, question it, ask about it. We can look up rules. I don't mind stopping and looking up rules to make sure we're doing it right. Um, and yeah, feel free to ask the chat also. If I'm not answering or I miss it, you know, do the at Rob's Gaming Table to mention me, or just ask other people in the chat. They'll, they'll have the answer. Uh, yeah, we want a mountain. What is this junk? Usually I get mountain pretty quick. Hopefully we get it right here, right? We're going to pull this one away, I guess. And we're going to roll these dice again. Okay, because we only had one worker, right? Which I normally don't do, but I thought this would be fun to roll some dice on the beginning to see what happens. Okay, no wounds. Uh, we succeed. We got the wishbone. Okay. And we're going to draw a card, though, unfortunately. Uh, so let's just succeed here. There it is. We got the mountains. Oh, more animals. Food, no wood though. And this is, uh, I've never really dealt with this yet, but it's like some kind of temporary shelter. So if we're on this space, I don't think we take a wound if we're in, in the night phase. Um, yeah, literally no good spot to put our camp is what I'm getting from that. So the randomness got me this time. Usually I have somewhere on these three that it, it feels good moving the camp to, but right now I feel like I don't want to put my camp on any of those. But that kind of sucks, I'm blocked in. So I think you can only move the camp once. But then we lose out on wood, right? Or no, we can move the camp here to keep getting wood, but then we would have no food. Oh, this is a new one. This is a new one. Uh, so let's do the card. Actually, let's get the determination token. I don't know what order to do all this in, but uh determination token so more temporary builder dudes uh another animal card okay and we're drawing a green card oh the dice tray yeah i forgot it was even here <laughs> not the first time i've done that uh you have found a skeleton in the jungle it's holding a pistol keep this card you can use it once oh there's good stuff in these decks you learn something new every time. Uh, you can use it to temporarily give you plus three weapon and discard after use. Plus three weapon level. Wow. Okay. Huh. I've never seen anything out of these decks that have been good. And the good stuff I see is something I don't need. Like giving me extra food, I'm playing solo and I already have a pile of food like that I don't need. Things like that happen a lot to me, but... <laughs> All right, sorry, I'll try to roll the dice tray. I forgot it was here. All right. 
You add that to the discovery deck? Oh yeah, add it up here, right? Future resources? Future resources. I don't get it yet. I don't get it yet. It goes up there. Everything I do in the action phase goes up there until I'm done, right? Which I'm done. So now I get it. And then we slide all this stuff down and we can use this stuff. None of these things happen right away. So we have a bunch of tokens here we can use whenever we want. Okay, that's how I understand how it works. I guess we could pump up our morale, right? Maybe that's smart to do. We can start healing quicker. I don't know. I don't know. Uh... So if I keep my camp here, that's fine. And then you guys are saying use a shortcut here. Yes, use the tobacco. Okay, no problem. Done. Throw that over here. Use for morale. Okay, okay. Um, what else? So that, that was the action phase done. Then we go next to night, uh, to weather phase, right? To weather phase. Uh, and because we're still early, we don't have to roll any weather dice yet. There's no tokens here to force us to deal with weather. So we just skip that. Then we move on to night phase where we could move the camp to an adjacent tile if we wanted. But I think that's a big no-no, right? Big no-no on that. Oh, you need to move your camp to keep exploring further. Move it? Do I move it? To the shelter one? Oh, okay. Nice. That's clever. But I'll get no wood, though. Are we okay with just food? Is this the spot? Yeah, see? You guys are like on a different level. I, I, I like, I don't know what I would do there. I get stunned. And then you don't want to explore, right? If your camp's too far away because it costs you like all these extra workers and or you're rolling dice like crazy. Only for one round. Yeah, but what if I draw another crappy spot here? <laughs> or should I, should I put it here? Should I put it here? Because like it's, it's one health loss if I don't have a shelter. So if I put it here, I still lose the one health I normally lose in the first round. But then I have like three options. New, natural shelter? Okay. Cool, cool. Okay. You guys are teaching me here. I love it. I love it. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the suggestions. Oh, you read it and get the benefit immediately? That's the thing, Bernardo, in this game, I get a little frustrated with some things you can do right away, some things you put in the future you can do later, some things if you do them right away, they have different uh, rules to them than if you, if you save them for later. Uh, and I kind of want to reduce the lookups, so I'll just try to follow that general. I wish it was more streamlined in this game, where like everything just followed the same. Like some things are temporary, some things aren't. Uh, usually they say, but it's just a little confusing. This game obviously rewards you if after you played a bunch of times and looked up all the rules. It kind of goes smoother the more you play, but... <laughs> Drew's asking, did you find the satellite phone yet? No, I, I wish I could to get the hell out of here. <laughs> ah, a lot of rules are ambiguous. Yeah, I saw the FAQ is pretty crazy. Okay, uh, so we move the camp. And then I must discard one food, otherwise I suffer two wounds. Okay. If I don't have shelter, but I do, I do because you guys are awesome and, and told me to move the camp. So we're at a natural shelter. So that's the first time I've ever really seen the natural shelter to think to deal with it. Usually I draw it like later and I already have like the shelter built on the other side of our token. So I don't really need it, I don't think. Uh, but we don't lose the health for that. You would, if you didn't run out of shelter, you take one damage. And then you discard all remaining perishable food, but we don't have any. Hmm. Okay. Now I have a question. How many of you would have put this first wood on our first pile, the wood pile, in the first round like that? Like, should I have done that? Because that's something I'm not sure. Like, I know we have many, many rounds, you think, right? But like, part of me is like, are we going to start seeing a flood of, like, I know you can save these tokens and you can choose when to build the mast. No, you never do that, right? Okay. Okay, good. I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the same thing. Okay. 
I was just curious. I was just curious. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. We have mountain. I forgot to do that. We have mountain. Okay, let's cover up all the things we can build. Mountain. We have hills. Yes, we have hills. We can build bricks. We don't have river, so no dam. We don't have river, or, or we do have hills for the pot. We don't have river for the map. We don't have the map for the shortcut. We don't have fur for the sling. We don't have the shovel for the cellar. We don't have rope for the shield. And we don't have fire for the fireplace. Ooh. I've never seen this one before. So a fireplace, you can turn one food into two health during the night phase. Now there's a reason why I'd want extra food, just besides the weather sweeping it away. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So that was one round, right? So then we start at the top of the round where we're going to draw one of these events. All right. The wind was blowing all night long. Your sources are devastated. So some devastation. So again, this symbol does nothing in this scenario. But you choose any two sources on the island tiles adjacent to your camp and cover them. They are exhausted. Wow. Scumbag, move. Any two sources. So I'm assuming I cover this food and this food and leave a wood open here. Wow. Yeah, that's rough. These are the kind of crazy things that just like blow my mind that they happen so quickly. Uh, cleaning up. So if I put a worker on this, plus if I have the shovel built, I can discard this card to get this. But if this comes off the track eventually, I choose one source on the island tile adjacent to your camp and cover it with another one. It's exhausted. Oh, man. Yeah, that's rough. Okay, so this slides over. We put the new one here. Okay, so I don't have to worry about this till it has no space and it slides off the end. Let it go off the track? Okay. Oh. Wow, not that bad of a punishment. I don't know, I feel like it's pretty crazy, but I guess if I'm not exploring, right? Or not uh, gathering yet. Okay, so next is the morale phase. Uh, this goes up by one, right? Because we're in solo. Now on the, uh, the top part, I have the option of taking two determination or taking a health. I, I did lose a wound, like I could reduce the damage. I don't know the play there. I, I don't know when to reduce damage, when to take tokens. I feel like right now taking tokens, and I really like the ability that I can spend two tokens once per round to, in replace of a wood. So I can save wood. I can use it to build roof or weapon level or whatever. Um, so I kind of like having those tokens. I also like having one or two extra in case I draw a card that makes me discard those. And if I don't have them to discard, I lose health. George is saying taking health is really worth it unless you're very low. So it's kind of like a resource, right? Until I'm at this end, I kind of don't care what's happening. I just get worried in this game. It feels like it's very hard to do quick healing at the end. And sometimes you struggle. But again, I, I hunted a little bit in my games, which you guys are telling me I probably shouldn't have really been doing. <laughs> but I like the furs, all right? I like the furs. Determination is the key to success in this game. Just collect determination. Oh, determination, the tokens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the key? I get it. Okay, so I'm taking two of them. I mean, I do like using these abilities. They're pretty cool. I always use the wood one almost every single round, I remember, before I was doing that. I did get the builder guy once or twice. I've never done the invention card draw because I didn't know how good that is. And re-rolling brown tokens, never have done that. Okay, so that's the morale phase. Production phase, on our camp tile, we literally only get food. There's no other resource here. So, banana. Okay, uh, next thing is uh, actions. What are we doing? What, what am I doing this turn? I'll tell you what I would do, based on you guys telling me to do the map. Uh, I would like to do it, but again, I don't have a river, so in my head I'm thinking explore, especially since our camp tile needs to be on a different spot. So I feel like exploring here has happening for sure. I don't know. I'm thinking dog and um, our friend here, Friday. But then what, what else? Building, uh, I can't build the shelter yet. I got screwed on the wood resource gain. 
But at least I'm covered, right? I'm covered for now, but I, I don't want to build roof yet, right? Because if I move, I lose some of my roof. Or lose all of it, actually, because it's not a shelter built. Started with one. No, I got one last round. I got one last round, right? It starts at zero at the start of the phase. You move it up, and then you take one. So I had one. And then this turn, uh, I used tobacco to go up to two. Last round. And then this round, it moved me up to one at the start of the phase. Then I took two instead of healing. Oh, my special ability. Yes, thank you. <laughs> my special ability. Should I do that? So I could dedicate two determination tokens to use my economical construction. Okay. And one wood. Okay, you kind of you put your resources with your pawn from your available resource spot to show that you're dedicated to that action. So nobody else can use those resources on a different action, like if you fail kind of thing. Build the hatchet, yes. Building the hatchet would be nice. And that moves with my camp, right? So I wouldn't lose that. I do have mountain. Build the hatchet and the shelter? How though? I only have one wood. I only have one wood. And, and this ability I can only use once per turn, right? Don't I put a token on this when I use it? Oh, don't build a shelter till I move the camp. Gather. Gather. Okay, that's a good one too. All right. So I, I, I like the idea of building the hatchet as long as we don't lose it, right? I'll do that with my determination. Okay, we'll throw this here. And this one's gathering. But that build might fail. Shouldn't I just shouldn't I just put two here? Like this is how I would play it. I put two here and two here and play it super safe. That's how I play. I, I know it's probably wrong. Optimal play is to build shelter with two pawns and explore with two. Uh... I could use candles, two of them. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I see, I see. But th they can only be used for build, though. They can only be used for build. Okay, so maybe try gather with one. I toss the candles. That'll get me a little brown temporary guy. This little guy right here. And he can go under the hatchet, because I want, I want that hatchet. That has to succeed. That has to succeed. I don't care. That's got to do it. Okay. Don't gather. <laughs> I love it. Everyone has different theories and I love it. I, I love it. That just shows me that like, no, you guys haven't, no one solved the game. I don't think. <laughs> no risk, no gain. I, I can understand that. But lots of risk in this game. If you risk too much, you lose very fast. Oh man. Trying to keep up with all the options here. Yeah, the shelter is two to build. Yes, George, two wood. Two wood for the shelter or one fur. Hence, hence why I'd probably hunt. I would probably hunt because I have this. I would be hunting to hopefully get some fur, which then leads to cheap shelters and cheap, um, cheap building of our roof with fur instead. So then I have wood to put on the fire. That's the way I've been playing it before. Anytime I get my weapon level up for free using my determination or cards or weapons from here, uh, oh, this can get my weapon level up, right? I should do that, right? That needs to go up one. Okay, I'm spending the old machete. I'm going to bring my weapon level up. Forgot about that token already. And then here I have uh, three determination, which I should just take right now probably, right? I'm just going to use this, toss it in for three determination. And that is from the medallion, the ladies medallion. So I'll just throw those there. So I'm going to forget this stuff's here. Uh, cause there's like too many tokens, too many tokens. I'll save a candles. You use the card without level one. Well, I have level one of the weapon now. And yes, it's just temporary. It's just temporary. Right? You can use it once. Your temporary gives you plus three discard after use. So we could go on a hunt. Use both candles. I have a history of killing goats. Yeah, bring on the goats. <laughs> I like in this game, I could choose to kill the goats and it feels right. 
Yeah, I, I can't build a shelter right now. I cannot. I only have one wood. I don't know if you guys can see it well. That bugs me that this is a brown background and these are dark brown tokens. Like it's it's not very good. Like even even not on camera, sometimes it's hard to notice uh, that you got wood in there. But I'm just gonna do the hatchet for sure. I don't have enough for the uh, thing. I'm gonna gather wood, I think. But is gathering bad to draw from here? Or, or. I could build the fire already. I don't know if that's a good idea though, but I could I could use the other candles and build the fire. But it's like kind of early, but I mean, what else am I doing? Like there is so many options in this like worker placement of choices where to put your guys. Even like we're in round 2, and I already just based on the small amount of resources, there's so much you can do. And I think that's the clever part of this game and, and what tickles my fancy is like not only where to put a worker, but how many workers to put there. That's the hook. That's the hook. Oh, move round counter. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jim. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Get out of here, Dan. I see you. <laughs> uh, gathering cards are usually worse than two others. Oh, okay. Good to know. John B, YouTube sending notifications, I, like, I don't know anymore. It, it's like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There might be a privacy setting you have to do uh, to update your, your privacy settings to allow that, maybe. I, I don't know. I'm not sure, John. But I know they mess around with stuff. They broke alerts. Like, YouTube changed how their alerts work. So, like, when people subscribe, they don't all come in, and sometimes they're delayed by four hours, I learned. Because YouTube only lets these companies pull so much data to pop up alerts and live streams. So YouTube's always messing around the back end, breaking things. Building cards are the most punishing, says Big Youth. Gathering is least. Oh. Big Youth has played this game over 100 times, trust me. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm just getting to know you, all right? Let's, let's build the trust together, okay? <laughs> okay, so... Gathering's okay. We're going to try the gathering. I, I've only drawn a couple cards from this deck ever, but I feel like they're bad. Okay. Cynthia says they're not too bad. We'll, we'll try. We'll try. Let's go with this. You should just do nothing, says Brian. You're probably right. Brian V says, I've played this game four to five times and lost every time, so trust me, not big youth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys are funny. All right. Uh... Okay, <laughs> final answer, final answer. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go with this. We're gonna go with what we got. All right, so first things first, uh, we, didn't, we didn't dedicate to this, this stuff here. We didn't hunt, building. So we, we're only building here on the hatchet. We succeeded, right? We have two workers dedicated here, a little support system going on. So we do not have to roll. Uh, we're going to spend the two resources, uh, the uh, determination tokens that we use to replace one piece of wood as our carpenter ability called economical construction. So this guy's like a one-time use and he's gone. But we'll get them back. We have another one here uh, to use eventually. So we built this. I'll just cover this up with, uh, I don't know, we'll do a blue token. Okay, this is built. So we can't, we can't build this again. And what this will do is we'll put a plus one wood on our camp space. The only problem is I don't know if we get a wood even if there's no wood to be had on the space. I feel like you don't. I feel like you don't. Because since there's no wood here to be gathered, it's not like we get now one wood. I think we have to move our camp to a spot with wood. And hopefully that's here. Like hopefully that's here. But we'll see. We'll look, we'll look that up if we need to, but we'll see. Hopefully we move. Uh, so next we go to gather. Okay. We did all our builds. We have no other builds happening. So we go to gather, uh, which is this one here. We need to roll the dice because we only have one worker uh, dedicated to this wood resource here. Okay. Magic wood. 
Jorge says, first edition used to get plus one wood. I think they changed it for second, so you actually need wood on your camp space. I think that's what I read. It's like, I, I've never been in this situation yet, but I feel like that's how it works. And it does move with you. Okay, perfect. All right, we succeeded. We didn't get wounded, uh, but we get to draw a magical fun card. All right. So the succeed means we get a wood. Okay, we're at two wood. Um, what else? Just this, right? Oh, we found mushrooms. Those are usually bad, right? Uh, you have found some mushrooms on your way back to the camp. You must decide. Discard this card. Or get one food per player and shuffle it into the event deck. If you do shuffle in, yes, mushrooms are always bad in these games. If you don't have medicine, each player gets a wound and then draw another card. So all night, so if, if I shuffle this to the deck, when I see this come out of this deck eventually, uh, we'll get wounded. We don't need the food right now, so I see this is kind of like a get rid of it, right? Yeah, these are definitely funny mushrooms for sure. So we're just going to discard this. Uh, I'll just discard over here. <laughs> yeah, it will rot because it's non-perishable, right? I wish it could hoard food, but I don't have anything to hoard it. But man, this would be really cool to get this little engine going, right? Like I, I want to try that again. We don't can't don't have it built yet, so the food still goes to waste. But at some point, if we can get extra food going, uh, and actually have somewhere to use it to get our health down, uh, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, you are supposed to read the bottom part. You are supposed to be the read the bottom part. Maybe in first edition you were not supposed to. Uh, but yes, I think you are. I think I even read that. It's like read it out loud, yada yada. It even tells you in here. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I think it actually says it in the second edition. But I could be wrong. Again, I could be wrong. Xy says, no, you're not supposed to read the bottom. Hmm. And I feel like they changed some things. Or you guys are watching like a different video. You've watched like a, a how to play video that maybe said it wrong or said you have the choice. But I feel like... It's in here. I'll find it. I'll tell you. I'll show you. I'll show you. Just need to find where that would be. Again, this rule book's not uh, really gathered the best. <laughs> hmm. I don't know where it is, but I swear it's in here. I'll show you. <laughs> oh man it is in there though i swear it's in this book i read this book twice i swear it says it somewhere in there or maybe it was the faq i did read the faq i read a bunch of it in the events section and i want to know because i don't want to be doing that if i'm cheating if it tells you to not do it event phase no but it's not an event. We're gonna find it. And if anyone knows the page number of where it tells you not to look at that, you send it right now in the chat. I will find it and I will, I will hang my head in shame. But I'm pretty sure H25 says George A. You used control F, didn't you? Oh, so it's at the end in like the uh, additional rules? I think you'd put that in the. Uh... <laughs> 
regular rules. Ah, yes. The information one, right? The information rule. I did read that this morning. So they have an additional rule. This is in the additional rule section, page 25. Bottom left. No information in this game is secret. Any card, token, or island tile should be drawn openly so others can see what risks and rewards they offer. When the adventure card is drawn, you can look at the bottom half of the card to know what to expect in the future. I knew it was like plain spelled out. Because I read that and I was like, oh, that's weird. Like, it's not even like, you know, it's not trying to hide any of it. It's like straight up telling you, obviously face down things, you're not supposed to be just looking through every card in the deck. But like, when you draw something, everyone, hand it around the table, read it, make sure you know what's coming. Jordan says you can, but you shouldn't. What part in the here do you not understand? It tells you. The rules are telling me I must read it. I have to. How dare you tell me I shouldn't when the designer of the game or whoever read, wrote this rule book is literally telling me I must. <laughs> no, they're not saying must. They're just saying I can. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't be it would I wouldn't be surprised if on another page it tells you you shouldn't. <laughs> you can, not you should. I know, I'm just joking. I'm just joking around. I'm joking around. <laughs> Let me just change some words here in this PDF. Ignacy is on the record saying don't. Uh, Jordan, the record is the rule book. Don't tell me in some buried board game geek forum post overrides this rule book on a second edition of the game. I'm not taking that. I'm tired of these designers dropping official rulings in board game geek posts and thinking Joe Blow Gamer is supposed to be like reading the entire rules for him before playing the game. No, 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 no. Rob's rant time. No, no. Not a fan of that. That's laziness right there. I'm sure it's in the FAQ though. I'm sure in the FAQ it's there. Uh, no, it's just additional rules. This is stuff they consider stuff you need to know, but like they didn't put it in the regular rules. But yeah, let me know if there's a page that says you shouldn't look at it. And I'm just going by the rule book, guys. But anyways, that's kind of funny. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I don't get why this game is so polarizing. That, yeah, Ryzar, it has 30 pages of official FAQ. <laughs> okay. So I, I knew it was bad when I bought this game used off, off of uh, this guy on Facebook. Uh, where is it? It's in here. This is when I knew I was in trouble. Uh, where is it? Inside the box. Where? I don't know where I put all that. Is it here? Somewhere in here. Oh, where did I put it? I had pages printed out. And I don't know where I put them. Oh, they went on the floor. I see it. Anyways, the guy had the whole uh, FAQ printed and he had all these like player resources off BGG. Uh, in the box, which I thought was pretty crazy. Uh, but they all fell on the floor. I'll, I'll get them later. But yeah, I just want to show that it was funny. The guy had the whole, like, like all color printed FAQ. And I was like, wow, okay. And then I thought, okay, the second edition doesn't need the FAQ because they would have, they would have uh, fixed the rules, right? But they did not. They did not. Okay. All right. And then he said, but I want all players to suffer and lose. So even though the rule book said you can read it, you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, you definitely wanted to punish people. I love it. Okay. So I read it. And, and where was it? Did we do it already? Okay, we're good, right? All right. We're going to read it because I'm following the rules. <laughs> where were we? We were resolving actions, right? So now it's time for explore. I think. Let me know if I miss anything there. Uh, so let's see what we get. So 
So no river. And but it's got food and wood on it. Which is good, right? Place we can move the camp at least. Uh we already have planes. And we do get a discovery token. Here we got this red X. And the X is a pirate saber to give us plus one weapon. Nice. Okay. Uh, I think that's it, right? Bob's got to go. Heroes peeps, quick visit tonight. I'm off to play Codenames Online for money with some in real life friends. Okay, have fun, Bob. I don't know. Code names online for money. That's interesting. <laughs> your friend, you're gonna, you're gonna rob your friends blind in some gambling over code names. I. That's interesting. Uh, that's very interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We did our action phase. This slides down, right? And now we're on to weather. Nothing. Night phase. We're gonna move the camp, right? We're gonna move the camp to here. And. We gotta eat a food or we take two wounds. We got food, we're good. Discard all the remaining food, there is none. And round marker. First, our first uh, phase event card, Memories of the Cruise. You spend the night talking about your ship, your shipmates, and your future here on this dangerous island. So this is gonna make us put a question mark on the brown deck. So. When we take a build action, we can choose which one, but one of them will have to draw a card. Whether we roll dice or we don't. And then morale drops by one. It's okay in solo, right? It just keeps going down and up. Uh, then this is going to go down at the bottom in the threat area. To deal with this, we need two workers. You can discard this card, get two determination. The morale goes up by one. Otherwise, if this leaves that track, we lose a determination. I feel like I don't care about that one. I feel like I don't care. But you guys are telling me determination is really good. Like, maybe I should. Uh, so he's going to slide down, and then this one falling off. Again, nothing happens. So we're, we're good, right? We're good. Nothing happens on that one. We're, we're okay. <laughs> These are funny. Okay. This is going to be an eight hour stream. It could be. We're two hours in. We literally only played two rounds. But uh, that's the fun of all playing together and explaining the game as we go. Okay. Uh, again, this game is super fast. By the way, once you know what you're doing, uh, I ripped through a game this morning. I feel like it was like 45 minutes. Uh, this game plays pretty quick. I guess more players, maybe not. But just solo, it's, it's a pretty quick one. Feels like setup takes longer than, than the play. But I could be wrong. All right, um, morale goes up by one. Uh, let's take two determination because you guys are telling me determination is the hotness. Even though I think I should take a health because I have already so many tokens, but we can use them for builders and stuff, right? Uh, okay, production. We now get a food, and because we have this token here, we get two wood. And now I think we should put a, a, a on a wood pile, right? Should I put on the wood pile now? One to start the first wood pile? The first stage or whatever? I feel like I should. I don't want to forget. And then I don't want to draw things that are letting me put wood on there. And I don't do them. Yeah, one on the pile now? Okay. Okay, so we got the first stage started. So now if I see like oil, right? I can then use it to fill up this pile and that kind of stuff. It just feels better than if I draw them and I'm kind of like falling behind. Not yet, said Rizard. Oh, oh, I am outside the shelter. Sorry, guys. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I don't have the shelter yet. I'm so used to having it by like second round. Yeah, I should lose a health. You're right. You're right. Uh, big youth, which two special abilities? Like, I know, I know this uh, economical construction one, spending two for the wood. What's the other one you're saying is like the main one I should use? I assume it's to add an additional builder for three. That's the only other one I've ever used.
Yeah, okay, perfect. We're okay, we're on the same page. We're on the same page. All right, perfect. Yeah, I've never used these other two, re-rolling a brown die or or drawing from this cart deck yet. But that's cool. That's cool. Okay. Um all right. We got our resources. Now we're on to actions. I want to build a shelter. I want to build a shelter. I feel like that's a must. So like let me just let me just say what I'm gonna do here. Uh, two determination tokens, and we'll use this ability. Okay, or uh, I could use the builder. So for three more, use this ability. Okay, I'll just do it, and then you guys can give me feedback what you think. But uh, I'll go to the shelter and I'll build it with one wood and one set of determinations to use my ability. I'll use a temporary builder with that. I think. I want to explore with Friday. I feel like that's the play is keep exploring because we can get goodies. Um, oh, I need to spend this. I, I forgot to do this, but I'm going to do this to bump up my weapon level. Get rid of that. I don't want to do it before I forget. Um, what else could I do? I still can't do this map. I, I want to do that. Does it do? Oh, this could give us a guy to help us exploring, like the dog, right? Oh, that's cool. Like permanent guy, right? But I want to explore. I need to find river. <laughs> oh, yeah. Renato says, I think that there are just a few players that deal with Alpha, Spirit, Island, Aeon Zen, and Mechs vs. Minions do a great job on it. This one has the Alpha issue. Oh, that's generally a co-op game issue. But it's, yeah, like George is saying, it's usually from an experienced player at the table who's already gone through the, you know, the trial and error, found the ways that don't work, found the ways that are more successful. And usually you want to win because you're playing as a team, right? Like picture in a sport, pick any sport, right? You got your, your captain on the team and your, your experienced players and your coaches. They're going to do the alpha move of telling you these are the plays to make. You're going to play this position. You're going to do these, you know, these things. Here's where we're going to take a timeout. Just shut up and listen to me. Here's how we're going to win, right? People take that from like the sports mentality, I think. And we're kind of ingrained to do that stuff. And you're working as a team in a co-op. Somebody is going to try to take the leadership role. It just happens. It's natural. So it's like, I don't know, alpha game is tough. Like it's, it's, you don't want to do it because you want those inexperienced players to experience the game and bang their heads a little bit. But then again, you also want them to win so they have some fun and come back. But it's that, that fine line of not just basically playing the game for them, but also trying to have a win happen or them have a good time. Um, so yeah, like that's a good debate. I, I like that one. But yeah, I can definitely see alpha gaming being harsh here. But again, it's your own tokens. You do what you want. So when you're playing this game, you know, three player, no one can tell you where to put your tokens, but you are supposed to work together and decide who's supporting and, who, you know, if you're going to work together and stuff, uh, which I think is neat, but you can explore with one, might get hurt, but five and six chance of success. Is that what it is? Oh, oh, I didn't. Yeah, that one's really good. Okay. So you think like go here? Yeah, I need to find a river, right? So, like, we still need to get through, you know, we still have six tiles left. I, I don't know how many rivers, I don't know how many of each type there are. So, like, I, I don't know if we should be plowing it fast or... Because a shortcut could lead to extra resource generation. Hmm. Rarely hunt. You can't hunt with one character, I thought, Cynthia, right? Don't you have to have two? Yeah, I think you have to have two. Like, I would take the dog. Once we're done exploring, like, with the dog, maybe if we get the map, then I'll use the dog for hunting, maybe. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Walbridge says, I've never experienced an alpha player, and I doubt I will as long as everyone does what they're told. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it. Oh man. <laughs> Go hunting. 
So you're thinking, uh, <laughs> maybe I do this? I have only one mouth. Yeah, but the fur though. Remember the fur can accelerate us building up our uh, our roof, for example, without needing to use up wood. I feel like that's a strategy and that's the one I kept taking. But again, I keep losing. I keep losing. So I don't know. But yes, the food's kind of a waste right now. So maybe not, maybe not. And let's just explore and try to get this river going. Because we also can get resources pumping with the map shortcut combo sooner rather than later. Jim says, if you don't know who the alpha player is, then it's probably you. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's, let's do the explore. Maybe we'll get some goodies. I don't know. Yeah, th th it's a gamble. There might not even be any fur in here. George is right. It, it might not be any fur, and I've learned that too. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, do our actions. We're going to go with this. Uh, nothing on the threat. We're okay with that. Uh, no hunting. Build. So, uh, we for sure build because we got two guys here. We'll lose this temporary guy. Uh, two determination gone and one wood. The only thing is, we have this token here. But we have to draw a card no matter what. And then this goes away. Which is super annoying. You have badly cut your hand. Oh, I'll put another wound token on your character's arm. Oh, do we already have the arm covered though? Yeah, we have the arm covered. We can't do this. I don't think we can do this card. I think I think what happens here is we just take a wound or something, right? Does anyone know the weird situation here? Because there's only one spot for your arm, I believe. And you, you can't put another token on there. So how, how big youth, how, how do you resolve this? Do I, do I take a wound because I already have one there or do I just discard the card? Yes. <laughs> God, a good discussion going on Alpha Gamers. I love it. Or, I mean, skill gaps. Unfulfilled demand would be one wound. Ah, okay. Okay, that works. That works. We take a wound, and this card just goes away, right? Or we have to shuffle. Do we, we don't shuffle this in. Because even when this comes out, right, we don't have it so I, I feel like this just doesn't go in there i don't know ah, that's a weird one i'm sure there's a ruling on that don't shuffle okay yeah because it doesn't make sense right it, it, it's gonna come out and it's like nobody got the wound i don't know that's weird yeah it's definitely a weird edge case for sure i've never seen that happen yet that's the first time yet that i've seen that weird kind of situation happen good to know okay uh now uh gathering no exploring so let's just do this one that's succeeding with the dog and Friday right here. Come on, river. No, it's mountains. Okay. Another wood and a food, but we get one of these tokens. Okay, so it's just a free wood from a fallen tree. So not yet, though. We got to put it up there first. Uh, then this one, we're going to do some rolling. Over here. We succeeded, and we're going to draw a card. And no wounds, though, which is nice. I like how we have not been rolling wounds. So I'm, like, scared to roll these dice because of the wounds and the cards, but... Uh, okay. We'll see what happens. There it is! We got the river. And it's a food and a, uh, a wood. Okay. So, river... Uh, where are they? Damn. A map. And that's that. Uh, another determination, and we'll draw a card in one second here. What's this? Herbs. If we have the pot built, we can raise our motivation. Uh, I don't really care about that, but whatever. It's something. Okay. Uh, card. Bamboo. You found a few bamboo sticks in the woods. Decide. Discard this card or get two wood. And shuffle the event deck. And yes, I'm reading the bottom. Uh, if we shuffle this in the event deck, crack of broken wood. The bamboo breaks and the whole construction collapses. So lose a roof. 
or a Palisades and then draw another card. I feel like I take this one. But again, that roof, uh, I could choose a Palisades if we have a Palisade level up. Or if this comes out and I have neither yet, uh, I just lose a health. Is that worth is that worth two wood? It's like getting wood now, but then losing it later because you've spent it to up this. But we also need wood for the wood pile. Hmm. Mm hmm. I don't know. What would you guys do? Would you? I would discard the card probably. I, I feel like the cost is is sucks. But you may not see it later, right? This may get shuffled in the event deck and shuffled over and over again and never make it to the top. But I feel like it's not. Yeah, I feel like it's not really worth it. Because like we we need the roof later, and if we have to lose the roof, uh, it's not a good thing. Yeah, unless close to the end. Okay, okay, you guys are thinking the same. Okay, so we'll just discard it. That's fine. That's how I would probably deal with that. But oh, and yeah, and I would have wasted an action to build the roof too. Yes, yes, thank you, Peach. That that's for sure. Yeah, it would be a waste of an action. Yeah, if you're close to the end, yeah, the risks. You got to take risks to win the game. Matt, I don't know. That's the thing. Ah, this is why I still don't understand. I know it's like, it's a gamble. It's all a gamble. It could pay off where I'd never see that card, right? But uh, right, I'm going to toss it. We'll toss it. <laughs> it's free wood though. Oh, free, free wood. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was from exploring. No range in the camp, no resting. Weather, oh, this will slide down into the action phase. We have to cash this in for wood right away. I believe it's how that works. You can't store it for later. Uh, the wood and food ones kind of have to go away unless it's like the goat, I think. We have three wood chilling in our available resources. We then go to weather, nothing's happening yet. Night phase. Are we good with the camp where it is? Is that good? Oh, did I forget to flip the shelter? I forgot to flip the shelter. I forgot. We built that, right? We did build that. Um, you move? I mean, I could move it to here, right? Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, move it up to the right. Yeah, that works. Because, like, it's good to move it before you build stuff, right? Because you don't lose anything. And then this way we have now this connected. That's the most I've ever moved the camp. This is very neat. I, I didn't really look at it like, like you guys look at it. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, okay. Now I don't get a wound for the shelter. Uh, food. I eat a food. I don't take two wounds. Uh, all perishables go. Round marker goes up. Now we're going to start rolling this for the next three rounds in the weather phase. Which we need to get a roof. That roof. All right. You need to get roofs happening. Like two levels of roof would be amazing. Is that, is that the play? Do I just go hard on the roof? All right. Uh, event deck. Mess in the camp. It takes time to clean up that mess. Uh, so we're going to put... Oh, that's good. I've never seen this before. But now if we want to take the arrange action, which we never seem to do in solo, it's going to cost us an extra worker. <laughs> That's a lucky draw. That's what that is, I think. Uh, but then, putting things in order, uh, you can put a worker on this to get an extra determination, uh, but each player will have to discard one if this falls off the end. I'm okay with that. So these shuffle over. <clears throat> uh, so on the bottom here, we have to deal with this. Choose one source on an island tile adjacent to your camp and cover it with a little token. It is exhausted. It is exhausted. So what are we covering? I feel like just covering this food right here. Okay, I'm covering the food that's adjacent here. I feel like that's the right play. I don't know. I can't cover anything here. There's nothing on this one. And this one, I don't know. I kind of might want to move the camp there if like bad things happen here. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, Hexy's got some good info. Special would have been shuffled in. You have two tokens on arm. Oh, is that how it works? How it works? These body parts can suffer special wounds throughout the game, which are marked with 
Respective special wound tokens. Each special can hold... Oh, okay, they can hold multiple? Did not know that. Uh... But I feel like it says in this game, any tokens, you can only have one on each space. Like, like of the same type of token. I know it's like a different color, but... Uh, each character has their own wound track whenever character suffers wounds, yada yada. Uh, where is this special wound? Each character sheet shows the character portrait with special markings in the head, one arm, the stomach slash torso, and a leg. These body parts can suffer special wounds throughout the game, which are marked with respective special wound tokens. Each space can hold multiple tokens. Oh, okay. Special wounds only result in the placing of these tokens. Characters do not gain a normal wound when this occurs. Special wounds remain. Oh, okay, okay, good, good, good. So we lose this. Uh, where is this token? I think it's the brown one, right? Special wound. Okay, they can hold more. Ah, okay, we learned something new. Uh, where was it? Nasty wound. Okay, so we put this on our character's arm and we shuffle it in the event deck. Okay. Uh, I'll just shuffle it in. If it's on the top, we'll deal with it. Um, but if it, if it goes under, I'm just going to leave it in there. Uh, cause I don't want to like rewind. We already drew a card and saw info. Uh, so let's look away. Okay. So like when cards go in like that, do you guys get the medicine built? Like, do you start valuing this very highly and build medicine to like save yourself from more wounds or bad things happening when these wounds start happening? I ignore them completely. And just take it to the face when they happen. But I feel like the medicine's just sitting right there. It looks like so easy to build it, right? Does it have any other advance or any other benefit? Not really, right? I don't know. Is that like a good idea? Hey, Rory. This is one of your favorite games. Oh, sorry to hear that. <laughs> just kidding. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, the roof level and the weather is how I lose this game every time so far. So, you build medicine, Rory? Okay. Well, I want to get my roof done, so let's do that. So, we did the event. Uh, morale, 30 maxed. Uh, two determination. We have three determination. Uh, production, we get a food. And two wood. And I feel like throwing some wood on the big fire. So I'm going to do so. Okay. Mm -mm. I still have three wood. Uh, okay, action phase. Get that roof built, right? Oh, or should I keep the wood to build the roof? Oh, but then I have my ability. I have my ability. And I, I just really want to get the roof up too. Build a roof and explore. So we have we have a little worker guy here. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cash this guy in. And I'm gonna take a temporary worker. And we're gonna go one roof level. And we're gonna use a wood and two of my determination tokens. We're gonna lose a couple in the next event phases, but okay. And then uh, I would do it again. You want me to explore also and gather. Mm. Mm. Oh, man. I don't know. I feel like I feel like going both in and then just two wood and we go like double roof. But then the dog's chilling. We're not exploring. I don't know. And then we've used up a bunch of wood. But building up the roof will protect us from losing wood in the future. 
I, I don't know. These are the weird things. But I, I feel like getting two for sure levels of roof on this stupid die right here. I don't know if it shows the res results on this. I never looked at this before. But man, this roof. It, like, it's 100% we need roof level 1. And it's like 33% we need roof level 2. And this stupid 1 in 6 chance we're going to get snow uh, in these next 3 rounds equals it using up our wood or we take wounds if we have no wood left. But, like, I... but in the long term, uh, once we get to the rounds where we're rolling the white die also, then you get in this weird situation and like I've... Man, one time three rounds in a row, I rolled two clouds on both dice. So like I was getting hit for level four and, and if you don't have a level four roof to protect you, every missing level you gotta lose a food and a wood. And playing solo, I'm not making any food, I don't really need it, but then that makes you lose food and wood and if you don't have the food and wood to lose, you have to lose health that equals each token you can't get rid of. And that's when my game falls apart. But I feel like I need to like roof level four, like minimum, like minimum needs to be done before we start rolling all three dice. I've never gotten to that because some stupid card always reduces me down to roof level three or two before I can get that going. Ah, I don't know. These are the, the frustrations. Game irks me, <laughs> but I love it. I love I love the way it's like getting me going. So you do one roof per day. I feel like doing two today and then doing one each day after. But then, will I have enough wood to get this going? Oh, I need to build the map, right? Yes, we need to build the map. Uh, let's gamble. Let's gamble. Right? Do we gamble? Oh, I do have the minus one cloud token, yeah. Don't get sidetracked by the map. But you don't think like this extra wood can help me catch up and, and build the wood pile faster so we don't have to wait till like round 12? Don't gamble on a build. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Not for the roof. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Better to gather food. Okay. Exit says, on my win, wood pile was completed in round 10. That's what I hope. I want to have the, round, the wood pile and the fire all done before that. We don't have to sit there round after round trying to hang on. Oh, man. This game. And yes, I can heal as part of the morale, but as the rounds run out and I'm, I need those tokens... One roof, one explore, and one gather. Roof, one explore. One roof, one explore. One gather. And then I have wood, I have extra wood. Okay. I can see that. Getting more done. I just feel weird when I'm not using the dog. But yeah, maybe we get lucky and we, we get some deter, uh, um, these tokens that we can get some extra like wood or uh, I don't know what else is in there. More of those builders would be nice. <laughs> Elko, thank you so much saying smash that like button there are 70 of us support him survive uh, i don't think all the likes in the world are going to help me win this game <laughs> uh earlier you explore the better oh, okay I, I i don't think i've ever explored more than this many things uh and that's why maybe i'm also failing because what happens is i keep drawing these things that like i don't end up using and i feel like it's like a waste but at a certain point i'm like whatever man but yeah, as long as I have like one place to gather. But again, I'm cool to try different things. That's why I like that I'm playing with you guys now. I knew you guys would try to like 
show me things that I, I wasn't thinking of, uh, which is cool. All right. Um, yeah, we're done. We're, we're good with this, right? Okay, so threat, no. Hunting, no. Building, yes. All right, so these two tokens are gone. This wood is gone. Going back. Builder guy's gone. Uh, and the roof. Okay, so we have level one of our roof. Okay, that's good. No cards, no, no dice rolling. Next, gathering. Okay, so we're going to get a wood, hopefully. Oh yeah, sorry. I should have put this on the wood. I don't need to gather food yet, right? Nothing else is stealing our food that I know of yet. Oh, oh man, I've never ever gotten this result before of a success and two blanks. Never seen that before in like probably 20 rolls of these dice. Never have ever seen that. Maybe it's because I don't gather a lot. Maybe gather it's like more likely to happen. Yeah, it is more likely to happen. <laughs> yeah, I don't gather very often. That's another thing I don't do. Okay, we get a wood. And we get lucky. We get lucky. All right. Uh, next is explore. We got the dog. We got Friday. They're rolling. Auto success. Let's flip another tile. What do we get today? All right, we got some more planes. Uh, a wood and another animal going to the deck. Okay. And two of those tokens. Two of those tokens. Give me the goods. Give me the goods. What do we got? Two food uh, we don't really need. All right. Again, useless stuff in here sometimes, uh, depending on what's going on. What else? Oh, <laughs> precious. Got some treasure. Okay. Uh, done. Slide this stuff down. Okay. Uh, the food we have to take right away. Annoying. You can't hold that for later, I don't think. Kind of super lame. Again, streamlining the game would have said you get to keep it and spend it later. But they want to make you lose more often, so they nerf that, I'm sure. Play testing. Uh, all right. And... Treasure. Treasure. All right, so here's how the stupid treasure deck works. A little weird. There are traps, there are creatures in here. But... I don't have to deal with them when it tells me what type of thing I'm looking for in the deck. Very clever, very interesting. But I literally just start drawing from this deck until I find a treasure. Well, that was easy. But what you could do is keep drawing. And like, if it told you to take a treasure and a creature, uh, you would keep drawing until you find one or the other. And then you can stop after you find the first card, which is super neat. Or keep drawing until you find the other. So I could, let's say I need to find a creature and a treasure. I would draw if I found a creature first, I deal with that creature, then I can stop. But obviously, why would you? Because you, the next thing you grab is a treasure. But you just keep going through the deck until you find, you know, and then, <coughs> excuse me, then you shuffle back in uh, what you need. So we got blankets, whatever this is. Now, there's a lot of cards here, and I have not seen more than like three of them. So uh, I'm just going to shuffle that up because we peeked out a bit of stuff. But, ooh, treasure map. Ooh, ooh that looks like a fun one. <laughs> I got lucky. Is it good? Is it good? Let's read it. Let's read it together here. I, I don't know what all these are, but what do we get? But hey, we got some blankets. Half eaten by rats, but still usable. Keep this card. Each use allows you to ignore. Oh, yes. I hate the snow clouds. They eat all my wood. Oh, I can ignore one snow cloud during the weather, weather phase. Discard when all three blanks have been used. Wow. Again, this is why I say this game's kind of a luck fest. Because, like, so far I've seen some good draws, and usually I get treasure that's, like, useless. I, I don't know. That's why I wasn't as excited when I got treasure, but. Okay, let's give us some blankets. That's cool. <laughs> yes! Okay. <clears throat> Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. I feel good already. All right. Can we pull it out here? I don't know. All right. So that was all just actions. Now we're going to go to weather. Get to roll this fun die. <gasps> oh, I didn't set up the two starting items. Oh, wow. Did I miss that? 
Ah, I missed that we went through all set up together. I didn't even notice that. I usually play with them. Was that like the last step or did I just like gloss over it? How bad am I? Playing on hard mode. Oh man, that's so funny. You think I would like really want to make sure I remember those? Oh, that's like, but yeah, okay. I totally glossed over that. Wow. Ulti Joe asked three times. Yeah, but the chat was like flying up and I totally missed that. This is like getting more treasure. <laughs> you forget this step too? I've read online, I was reading, like trying to figure out rules uh, stuff. And I was seeing posts where people play this game all the time and they forget stuff during setup. It's not like a, an uncommon thing, I think. But it is funny. There's like so much. That's why I went through setup at the start of the stream because I didn't want to forget anything. All right, here we go. What do we get for starting items? A pistola. Yeah, I don't know. Plus three temporary. Man, now I should go hunting, right? Like I... <laughs> I'm getting like overkill on the hunting items. Uh, pipe and tobacco. Okay. Now see, it, this would have been nice earlier because I could have used this to like get more builders and stuff like that. But we still can use it. It's not like this is a waste. Like you can hold this stuff and use it whenever. We didn't need the pistol yet though. So I don't feel that bad that we missed that on setup. Definitely don't feel bad at all. But we could cash this in like right now, right? And get a whole bunch of, uh, let's just use this, right? I think you can use it like anytime to just get like four determination and just toss it away, right? That's how that works. I can just pop that whenever, right? And just get two determination each for each token. I could have built the shelter round one with that. Yeah, you're right, right? Uh, did I? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because I would have had... <laughs> oh, well. You live and you learn. It's all good. That's not a big deal. I mean, it kind of is. What other starting items are there? I haven't seen them all. We could have got one... Uh, we could have got one uh, unperishable food. I've had this empty bottle before. It could, like, permanently raise our weapon level. Oh, this one... I've had this one before. The flask. Uh, you can drink some uh, rum during the night phase to heal up. I don't know how that works, but sure. Hammer and nails. This one's a nice one. Getting us extra little temporary builders. I've not seen the Bible. When a player uh, takes the arranged camp action, they get three uh, determination and two health instead of just two determination. Eh. What's this one? Storm glass. Roll the weather dice as specified by the scenario before the action phase, but resolve the outcome during the weather phase as normal. Oh, so you can kind of prepare, right? That's an interesting one. Okay. Okay. One use per turn? Is it really? No, I don't think so. Is it? Anyone know for sure? X he thinks. And he was right about one thing earlier. Maybe on to something. But then again, I could have used that starting item at any of the previous rounds, and I didn't. <laughs> All right, where were we? What were we doing? We did weather, right? We're on weather? Did I roll the weather? Canadian doesn't know how a nightly snort of rum works. <laughs> uh, okay, so we got one roof, right? This just protects us against one cloud. One cloud, one roof, we're good, right? That's what I'm doing, Hexy. I just figured I'm using it. I, I used it already between the start of the game and now. And I've just been holding the tokens. <laughs> little, 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 little rewind. Okay. Uh, so, night phase. Uh, should we move the camp? I don't think so. I'm going to leave it. Uh, one food. Okay, one food so we don't lose two wounds. 
we don't lose health because we have a shelter. And then we gotta lose all our perishable food. So it's all gone. We're gonna move the round marker to round five. Start of a new round. It's raining. Okay, we're gonna get a gray token here. So on the gather, we have to draw a card. Oh, it's gonna put a cloud in the weather space. But we have at least one cloud coming for sure. And there's no blanks on this die, so. We need that roof level at two, possibly even three. But again, we have large leaves to help protect us against one cloud. So we really need it at level two, I think at least right now. Uh, and then this is gonna go down stronger roof. So you can spend a worker and a fur, discard this to get one uh, determination. And if we let this fall off, another cloud will go in the weather space. Ooh. Okay, so this one falls off. And we have to discard a determination. Okay. Uh, morale, we're, we're maxed out. Um, I feel like just taking two determination. So we can get some builders going and some wood going. I feel like we're only at two wounds so far. I feel like that's weird. I feel like I'm usually higher, but again, I would be hunting. And you guys are telling me not to do such things. Use a spare health cube to mark the phases because you lose track. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Might explore and find a goat for fur. Yeah, I forgot about the goat. I have seen the goats before. Okay. So you're saying explore. Uh, do we do all our stuff? No, we didn't do production. We get a food and two wood. And I think I have five wood. Do I, do I put some on the wood pile here? I feel like I do. Does the roof... I, I just need one wood. And if I'm not... And the other build I would do is maybe... Do I do the map? I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, just put some wood. Put the three wood. Need to get all the wood on here before it starts like blowing away due to the weather. But then if I get the roof going good, right? But it's the snow. The snow that burns up the wood kills me. How do I correct that? Just gather more? Or get the shortcut? Do I bail on the shortcut play? Like, is that the... Is, should I just ignore that? I don't know, but I can explore. <sighs> and we said I'm gonna do the temporary builder, right? Temporary builder. Oh, the map. Hey, this mast, uh, the rope. Should I be building like the rope to try to get the mast? I don't know. Or the snare? I, I don't know. Okay, let's get rid of three. We got a temporary builder in the mix. Hail and shortcut and gather wood instead. Oh, okay. With extra pawns, once roof is max. I have lots of good yeah, lots of good options. I love it. Okay. Uh so the roof for sure, uh, one wood, and two determination tokens, right? I'm supposed to put them like on the guy, whatever. Okay, level one roof, this one, gather. Yeah, there's some wood. Roof oh, medicine. <laughs> Should I do that? Should I do medicine with this one? But I shouldn't gamble on it, right? Like this? Leave the dog? Is it that important? Like, I have the wounds, like, but I know they can speed up really fast once we start rolling three weather dice. 
That's what I feel fails me, is if I don't keep my wounds down. Hmm. Yeah, let's gamble. Let's gamble. I don't know. I don't know. I'm so low on health, I feel like it's okay. It's an okay gamble. But, like, if I'm never going to heal with this and, like, never rest, I, uh, I feel like I should do this fire thing and then build my snare would have been cool. That would be a nice little, like, health generation engine. Then I'd be super risky. Okay. A gather would cause us to shuffle it. Oh, yeah. Ah, that's, that's 500 IQ play right there. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we decide to discard it. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're good. We'll go with this. We'll go with this. Let's see what happens. Uh, nothing happening here. No hunt. Build. Right here. Boom. We'll spend these. Spend the wood. Automatic success because we have two guys here. Temporary guy will go away. Uh, roof level goes up. Okay. Next is gather. Uh, we're going to roll the dice, but we're going to draw a card no matter what. Uh, we got two determination. We actually didn't get the wood. We get two determination because we fail. Uh, we're drawing a card anyway. Doesn't matter. We didn't get a wound, which is nice. But we didn't get the wood. A new flock. You arrive at your destination, you see a large number of birds. Put plus one food on the tile where you're gathering resources. If there is no source of food on the tile... Oh, I failed. Uh, the token is now considered to be a food. Oh, hey, yeah, that's nice. Oh, now we got food there. I didn't know this was a thing, or maybe I should have went here. <laughs> Damn. Okay, anyways. Shuffle in the event deck, and then if it comes out, all is vanished. Predators have moved into the area. Cover all sources on the tile with plus one. Oh, I need to keep... Oh, so we just lose all the food there eventually. Okay, that's fine. Ah, that's fine. I don't care about that. So we're going to put this in here. But minus two determination equals one wood. Uh, oh, yeah, we use this. We use this. this. This has been used. Okay, let's look away. Let's shuffle. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it'll give me extra determination. Oh, agreed. I know, this wasn't that bad. This wasn't that bad. I agree. I agree. That worked out pretty well, I think. Yeah, I was not happy. I was not unhappy to fail that one, that's for sure. Just to card, but the card would have came anyway. Okay, so uh, explore. You have three tiles left. Or two after this. Two after this. Some more mountains. So we get another beast. It's here, right? Get another beast. Okay, we get another one of these uh, cool tokens. Hopefully it's something good. Ah, it's some... Whoops, it's some wood! The wood, that's good. Fallen tree. Okay. Uh, now... I think that's it for that one. Nothing here. Weather. Oh, this slides down. We get a wood right away. Two wood and a food in our pile. One cloud plus one cloud is two. We have roof level two, GTFO weather, and this goes away, right? Boom. Okay. Uh, now camp time. Uh, we're not moving. Is there not a space for this last one? Is it always like one you can never get to? Or does this go here? Is this like, or like, I don't know. Are those spots or not spots? I don't know. 
It's like they don't, they're not finished. I, I don't know, that's weird. Oh, there's always one left. Okay, I didn't know that. That's cool. Good to know. <laughs> Good to know. Okay. Um, players can move the camp. Uh, we got to eat. Okay, we ate. We have a shelter. Don't discard food. Move the round. Event. Sleepless night. So this will put a like a victory reroll on the build, gather, and explore action spaces. So these tokens sit on here is my understanding. And anytime we roll the little V or wishbone or whatever it is, uh, we have to reroll that die and then the token goes away. So if we do one of these and we roll the die and you get like a fail result, uh, the token stays there until you see a success, which is crazy. During the next action of each type, you must reroll one result. And then this rest is going to go down in the bottom. You could discard it, get a determination. And then if you don't, we're going to have to put little question marks on the explore and the gather. Okay, we'll slide that over. Uh, now we must discard a determination. Very good. Okay. Done. All right. Morale, we're good. Uh, two, I'm going to take two tokens, I think. Still, yeah, still good. Yeah, I have not found the wood helping freaking oil would have been nice. And yeah, there's no goats. This has been a weird, weird pull out of that bag. Uh, okay, now production. Uh, so it is one food and two wood still. Okay, we have four wood and we have one food. Do I throw four wood on the pile? Feel like we wouldn't be able to get a roof up we need to get a roof up i feel like we need to get a roof up if not this round by next round at least but i feel like doing it this round and next round would be very powerful I don't have any fur it'd be so nice to have some fur throw two of it on the pile and do third roof okay okay Yeah, <laughs> big youth. I'm. I was thinking the same thing. This is like the worst one that's come up. I feel uh, is the question marks trying to uh, deal with this before it happens. And it's only one worker, and we don't roll any dice or anything weird. But I could totally see that as a play. All right. So I feel like exploring, but I also, I also feel like hunting, but then an explorer could lead to a goat. Maybe, but maybe not. But the hunt would lead to some fur. We have a weapon level of two. I have a two ways to temporarily increase it by three each. So I feel like I could get some fur, which will give us a way to build roof and even palisades maybe if we care. I don't know if we care, but at least roof without spending wood anymore. We can hunt with the dog next. I just don't know what's the best gamble to get me fur. I kind of like want the best way to get fur. I feel like maybe it's not this. I, I have a, still a bunch of tokens in here. I feel like it's like, I don't know, six or eight tokens still. Maybe like eight, seven. I don't know. But the animals, I know some of them have no fur. And there's there's five here. We will hunt at some point. Like the dog eventually is like got to do something, I feel like. And he can only hunt or he can explore. And we're about, we're about to run out of places to explore. This is the last one. Next turn is the last roof. Not necessarily. If I have the resources, going to five roof, I would not be afraid. You can go unlimited on the roof. You can keep building roofs. And if I ever have to lose, that would be great. But I don't want to spend wood to get to like level five. I would do it if I had a fur. But I don't know if that's a waste of an action. Yeah, you can. In this game, you could go like it's dot 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 uh, on all of these. Actually, you could go to like weapon level like 30 if you wanted, if you could. I don't know if that's possible. 
But yeah, all of these in this version, uh, you can go higher than what it says. It's unlimited. Yeah, it's, it's neat. I don't think it's like that in first, right, George? I feel like that's a new thing. Because I feel like the old board didn't have that dots on it. But I could be wrong. You don't take care of the latest threat. You have guaranteed plus one rain cloud next turn. Oh, this one. Yeah, yeah. That will happen. Yeah, that'll happen when I'm rolling all three dice, right? But I don't have a fur. I don't have a fur to deal with this one. I, I can't do it, right? I, I, like, there's nothing I can do on this one now. I, I, it's gone too long. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't go hunting. Deal with this one? Oh, because I could clear this space, right? If I clear this space, it doesn't slide off. Ah, I keep forgetting that. Hmm. Okay, I see what you're saying. All right. I think I'm going to do my ability of getting me a build worker versus a wood. Like do just this last one and do like this, like build a roof, but actually use two wood. And then for this one, deal with this. I totally forgot about that. I forgot that it's like, it's got to push it off. It doesn't just always like keep sliding. The Jot's here. Hey, how's it going? Matthias is here. Hello. All right, let's go with this. Uh, so first threat. So we just put one guy here, which is all we needed, one worker. And then we discard this card and we get a, oh. Oh, it's too late though to use this to create wood. Yeah, I think it's too late. All right, so that one's gone. Uh, next is build. So these guys will come back. The wood is spent, and we got the roof. The roof is built. They're building more roof. All right. Then explore. Dog and Friday. Uh, flip a tile. This is the last tile we're going to see in the game. Hopefully it gives us, like, six of those tokens would be nice. Oh, uh, it's only one. <laughs> what was the other one? Oh, look, there's one with three on it. Oh, man. I think we had that. Yeah, we had another one with three. Oh, I wish it was this one. <laughs> Damn it. All right. So we get another food place. That's uh, more hills. All right. So we grab one token. Oh, yeah, the blanket. Yeah, the blanket will help us. The blanket will help us not lose wood. That's huge. That's huge. Oh, what do we get? Do we get the wood one? No, this one heals one health. Ah, some herbs. We got some herbs. Not the greatest, but still fine. I wanted the one that gives us oil that's uh, two wood for the wood pile. would have been huge. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so this will slide down. Uh, I might as well just use this before I forget. And we'll just heal one. I mean, I feel like that's okay, right? Uh, okay. Weather phase. Yeah, no goats and no oil. Is that the only way you can get tokens out of this bag is from this, the discovery? Is there no other cards or anything that do it for you? I feel like that's kind of sad. And we got no goats. Okay, one cloud, we're good, right? We got three roof, blocks out, we're good. Uh, night phase, we just basically have to eat. And we're good. Round marker, all right. Now in the weather phase, we're going to be rolling all three dice. So it's going to get bad. It's going to get bad. All right, event. Slow work. Everything is taking longer than you expected. Put a plus one 
wood in the build action space during the next build action that requires wood you need to spend one more oh that's no fun that's a no fun and then this at the bottom uh is a rest you can put one worker here discard the card and get a token otherwise you put another plus one wood thing on the build space i feel like that's a bad one that's one you don't want to see in the castaways scenario <clears throat> you resolve that threat? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, then morale. Uh, two tokens. Okay. Uh, production. Food. Two wood. Do we dedicate the wood to the pile? Or do I build that fourth roof? Oh, ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> I don't know. Let me think if i if i put the wood on now i'm done this phase and then i need five for the next one but right now i still want to build that fourth roof and i need wood to do that i have the tokens to help me but i don't know i could eventually build the rope but i need a fur to get three wood off the mast i feel like that's the play to get the last one filled up with five i still need to build fire too Still some building that needs to be done. Hmm. I think we go on the hunt. I, I feel like I, I leave it at level three roof because of the leaves, right? If, if I have the leaves for now, it kind of buys me a turn uh, to maybe not build up the roof. But like I, I've, I've never got to like four level roof and kept it for more than like a turn. But uh, I think that's what I do. So, uh, I feel like I throw the wood in. Okay, level four is done. I ignore the roof this time. These guys go on a hunt. Although I don't know if I should send Friday, because maybe he might die. But I have the buff on the weapon level stuff, right? But then I know there's like extra damage that can happen and stuff if you don't have medicine. Okay, and then these guys, I feel like I would spend her ability to get another little temporary guy. And this temporary guy, I feel like building the fire. But, uh, also, but do I just gather? I gather, I think. Gather and I do the fire, or is it too early on the fire? Gather wood, yeah. Fire is okay, and gather one, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Gathering the wood and then building the fire just to get the fire like out of the way. I don't have to spend any wood on it or anything right now. Either that, or I build medicine to prepare for cards coming up, but again, they might not show up. I don't know. And they're just wounds, and I'm pretty good on the health, or I go the shortcut route. But there's only a few rounds left, I think, either or, or I die or I, I win. So, like, is a shortcut worth it for all those actions to just get me, like, a couple extra wood? Maybe it is if the, if the snow keeps showing up and burning all my wood away. That's what kills me. I never, like, that last five wood is so hard to get on there. I don't know. Or to build the rope. I build the rope, maybe, for the mast instead. What's my threat card? Oh, yeah, the threat card. I forgot about the threat card. Thank you. Forgot about the threat card. So maybe we don't use this worker yet. We don't use the worker. Can we just do this? Or 
or we don't worry about gathering the wood. And we do the rope. We do the rope. Either is fine. Oh, but there's options. That's the cool part about this game, Brian. You're, you're right. It's analysis paralysis happens for sure. And definitely I would have, if I was playing this not on camera, I would have just gone ahead, picked what I thought is right. And that's what I've been doing. I play this game super fast because I just try something different when I'm going and I feel like I evaluate pretty quick and then I just pick an action and see what happens. But I don't know the game well enough, right? And you just need to put reps in with this game to see all the different cards and what things could happen. Um, that's what I think. But here on stream, I definitely want to talk about each option because it's like people don't know this game. Like I just want to show there is you could do like so many different things. And I think that's the appeal of this game is it's one of those worker placement games that just has so many options. There are ones that are more correct than others, but based on the luck aspect of the game, you could pick certain options and they just work out for you or they you could pick the best option and it just fails completely flat based on you re-rolling, drawing cards, what you pull out of a deck, what you pull out of a bag, like whatever. It could be like the worst option, but like it's like maybe you get lucky on your option that maybe isn't the best. I don't know. Too many options? Uh, I don't think so. There might be a lot of options, but again, I haven't played any other scenarios, so maybe all those options are there for other scenarios. They become, you know, rope skipping simulator. <laughs> You'd skip the rope. You don't think I need to start thinking ahead for this uh, mast? And also, also, big youth. One of the things I'm thinking of is uh, there are cards, I've seen a few of them, where they flip over an invention. So part of me in my head's like, if I make fire and then I, it's the only thing sitting there and I chill, it flips, I'll be losing my mind. But the rope, I could flip it and then hopefully quickly enough build the mast and then I don't care if the rope flips back. That's my thought. That's my thought. In both games I played, there was something, and I've seen two or three different sources that flip uh, shortcut or flip uh, items back over. So it'd be a big waste of an action if the fire is just chilling. It's my only thing. That's my thought process there. It's debatable, but you have a clear path to victory if you build the fire and just gather constantly. Okay. Okay. Well stated. Okay. Fire it is. Get the fire going. Okay. Uh, all right. We're good. Let's go with the threat. We're good. We got one worker there. We discard this and we get another determination token. Boom. We have two. Uh, hunting. Okay. We're going to draw the top card. Oh, it's the alligator. Okay. So we need six weapon level. He's six health. So this is how this works for combats. Uh, he's got six health. But what's going to happen is we check our weapon level. We're only two. So if I didn't have ways to buff it, uh, we would literally take four wounds right now. And then, because we're fighting this guy, he like, he like breaks our weapons a little bit, wears them down, reduces the durability by two. So we would go down to weapon level zero, which we are going to. That's going to happen no matter what. And we're not getting any fur because this alligator decided to get a haircut before we fought him. So he's literally like wearing nothing. He's naked. So yeah, uh, big fail. So what we're going to do, let's just use this one. We're going to use this one. So temporary gives you plus three. We discard it after use. Okay. I'm now up to a temporary weapon level of five. I feel like I just stop there and take one wound and not waste the pistol because I may want to go fight a couple more times or or the stupid weather deck, this stupid weather uh, dice, sorry, the weather dice could possibly force me to do a three fight. So I feel like I want to keep the pistol loaded and ready to go. Elko says he would crap his pants if he saw a furry alligator. <laughs> yep, so Josh says in Canada, even alligators have fur. This is correct. 100% accurate. <laughs> Bit Jam says sometimes life isn't fur. I agree. <laughs> and, he and George says, I told you hunting was a bad idea. I know, but I thought I could get some fur. If I got some fur, I'd have some cheap roof material. It'd be great. Okay, so we're just going to buff it temporarily. We'll take a wound. Then our weapon level goes down to zero. Uh-oh. Uh, we get three food. That is kind of useless. Unless we had, like, the fireplace or something. 
And alligator is dead. Oh, we don't take the wound. Friday takes the wound, right? Because he's the guy on top of the stack. He deals with the consequences. Yeah, Friday takes the wound, right? I mean, I could let Friday just die. And he takes all the wounds, but we'll keep him around for a little bit. He is like an extra worker. I don't want to lose workers in a worker placement game. I feel like that's the thing. I know you can let him die. I assume letting him die near the end of the game is fine, but uh, yeah. Okay, so next is the build, and we were building the fire. So this goes away, she goes here, and the fire goes up here. So it goes into future resources, and it will be built uh, at the end of the actions, which I feel like is right now. Yep. Okay, so we'll slide that down. Uh, the fire is going to give us plus one palisade. So, boom, we're level one palisades. And then it flips over, we now have the fire resource. Okay. Uh, weather dice. It's not like you have a history of sacrificing your NPCs, says Brian W. Yeah, and pfft, I would never do that. <laughs> so, John, remember your intern policy from Clank Legacy? No, don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Use the pistol instead, so you have the ability to use both later. Oh, is it once per round thing, right? Yeah, I never even thought of that. You're right, you're right. Let's just use this. If Yeah, because I can use these at the same time, right? Yep, here's the enemy. So we definitely get this guy. We have to fight a, like deal with a level three enemy. So I'm just going to, I guess, just toss this away. And just deal with it. Okay, that one's dealt with, sure. Uh, the snow. So normally you would want to burn away one wood because we got snow. But let's ignore it. Let's ignore it because we take a wound. Let's just use our blanket, right? Or not. Should we just take a wound? Because we want to use the, the blanket to protect wood, I think. So I feel like I'm just going to take a wound from this one. I don't have the wood. Get out of here. And then we total up the clouds, which we have three clouds versus three roof. No issue. Yeah, I'm going to take a wound. Yeah, because I feel like health is like a resource. I don't want to later lose wood because I have no blanket left. So that, that's my theory. Protect the wood. The wood is more important than my life right now. Because without the wood, we don't set the fire. We don't let the ship know we're here. And we don't live the rest of our life. So it's like, survive another day on the island or survive the rest of our life. The wood. The wood. <laughs> the wood is on fire. <laughs> uh, no on a desert island and an alligator that you can't eat. Yeah, Graham, I know. This is it's a little weird. I know. It's a little weird. <laughs> it's a little weird. Okay, uh, where are we at now? Uh, that was all weather. Night. We got to eat. And then all the rest of this food is, mm, is perishable. So it's all gone. And we have a shelter. We're good. Uh, we're not going to move the camp. Round marker goes up, and event. Loss of hope. Loss of hope is the end. This round, the first player can only... Oh! I've never seen this one before. I can only build, arrange the camp, or rest. And then it goes down the bottom, and I can discard it to get a token. Otherwise, morale drops by two. I don't really care about morale dropping by a couple. That's fine, I think. But I literally can only... Oh. Only build. Oh. Can I forget this? Extra wood? Not yet, right? I don't think I built with wood yet that this has been here, but maybe I did. Whoops. If I build the roof, I gotta use extra wood. Okay, so morale. Uh, two more tokens. Uh, production. A food and two wood. Yeah, if I could have found fur, man, if I could have found fur and I build the rope right now, I feel like the mast gets me there if I throw this wood on the thing right now. But I still have to survive uh, this round. 
next round the round after. I still have three more rounds to survive. So I gotta build a roof to survive those rounds. I, just, I gotta think of survival, not just getting off the island yet, but like I gotta do things that can help that happen. So uh, yeah, I gotta use the wood for the roof, right? So let's do that. Let's do the roof for, we're not close enough to the finish line to start going Hail Mary all about the wood. Building the medicine, you might be right. Might be right. Or the, I still wanna think, I'm, I'm thinking about the rope, but I gotta hunt to get fur. But it's like, I, I don't, I have a pistol, but it's like, man, I don't know. To build the weapon levels, I think the rope and the mast are out of play. I don't know. I don't know. Could just gather like crazy. Hmm. Okay. Um... Uh, the only way I would hunt is with the plus three weapon, but it could lead to me taking a lot of damage. But building my weapon level... Oh. Just gather to get my wood? I build a fireplace. Yeah, I, I, the fireplace looks super cool. Because I, I have the requirement for it. So for one food, I could get two health. But then I need to like gather food. Like if I did the rope, like it, like I was talking about this earlier, this would have been a kind of cool line of play is like have the rope built, then I build this and then on my camp, I'm getting extra food and then I build the fireplace and it creates this healing engine. So then I could just go hunting and take damage and kind of not be as scared. But remember in this round, I can only build, arrange the camp or rest. So I can't even gather right now. So we're saying I'm building the roof. Uh, let's do two tokens so we don't have to spend a wood. I think. Actually, let's do it like this. I mean, we could rest, right? Or, oh no, I need an extra worker here. Building roof is three wood. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yep, this token. Yep. There we go. There we go. All oh, the threat action too, though. <laughs> uh, uh, we could just hope, we could just hope we don't roll too many clouds with this token in the space. Oh man, if we could have got two fur off that animal, oh, we could have dealt with that and then I wouldn't be as worried and we could have used some fur for the roof. Don't heal? What am I doing with this then? Deal with the threat instead? Done. Easy peasy. Rule check. Can you deal with the threat? Oh no, yeah, I'm not allowed, I'm not allowed. I don't think so, right? Yeah, this round the first player can only build. That's why I just threw it on the rest, right? Yeah. Just risk building the bricks. What do the bricks do? Where are the bricks? Oh, plus one palisade? Like, I got this reroll here. I don't know. Yeah, I can't do the threat. I either... Yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to risk it. I'm just going to heal one. It'll give me, like, an extra buffer when we start, like, bad things start falling apart. I'll feel okay that we have, like, pretty much full health. I'm just going to go with the rest. Let's play it safe. This card is horrible. Horrible. Okay. Things are st <laughs> the cracks in the foundation are starting to show. Okay. Uh, so threat. Nope. Hunt. Build. Yes. Build right here. 
So we use an extra wood and some determination. And the roof is level four. Uh, and then we just heal one. Yeah, Fr Friday wouldn't be the first player. Oh, I could have done Friday on that? Like this? It says first player, which, uh, yeah. Uh, but, mm. That's right, right? I could do that instead? Yeah, I think so, right? Because Friday, hold on, there's a little little thing on Friday in here. Uh, let's see. All right, Friday is represented by his card in the solo and two-player game. Place him next to the board and the action pawn on it. Place the wound marker. Friday can never be the first player. <laughs> so by that ruling, and Friday is not affected by event cards, neither immediate nor threat events. Exception, the argument card. That's not argument. I think just those two lines, we get away with it, right? And Friday can do that stuff. Yeah, so Friday's good. Friday's good. So I put the health back, or the damage, or whatever. And this will go away, and we get... Friday gets one of these tokens, unfortunately, not me. But whatever. And this goes away. Hmm... G I F. Uh, big youth re-rolling. What am I re-rolling? I haven't rolled any dice. I think these only happen when I actually roll dice. No. Like they're not the same as this. This makes you draw a card, even even if you don't roll dice. But this only rolls if you get a victory result, or like a wishbone result, or whatever it is. And I'm not rolling. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 I thought so. I thought so. Yeah, these sit here like haunting you, like, come on, Rob, roll the dice. You'll see if you succeed. <laughs> they may, they basically just say to me, use two resort, two workers on everything you do, uh, if you can. Next turn, lots of gathering. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so that was our stuff. Did we roll this already? Did we do all this? I forget where we were. We were on actions, and we just fixed that one, right? Surrounded by wood, yeah. So I think we're in weather, right? Yeah, let me know if I'm wrong, but I think I'm in weather phase. I'm pretty sure. Because we just did all those actions. I just don't know if we did the weather stuff yet. All right. Palisade broken. Right, that's one of these down a level, I think. Down to zero again. Pretty sure I've not seen that come up yet. Okay, uh, and then no snow. I don't think I've ever seen the white die ever not do snow. I feel like I've never seen that in any game yet. This is crazy, but it's four clouds and we have four roof. Uh, yeah, I'm down. Okay, night phase, we're gonna eat. Uh, round marker. Event. Natural dam breaks. An unexpected flood is destroying everything in its path. During the production phase, this round, you get plus one wood and no food. And you put a green question mark thing. And then protection. I need the shovel and a worker. Discard this to get a token, if possible. Oh, no. See? This is the problem. This is the problem right here. Look at this. If possible, turn up to two items face up to invention side and cancel their effects. So that's two rounds away. So I might be okay. But it's like that kind of crap, man. 
That drives me nuts. <laughs> that drives me nuts. Uh, I don't want to build the shovel. <laughs> Would I be okay, though? I don't know. Uh, Alright, morale. Mm, two tokens. Okay. Production. Uh, so we don't get any food. We put a green thing here. And we get extra wood, though. So we get three wood. That's how I read that. Three wood. Now do I throw that wood right on the fire? I feel like I do. I feel like I do. Yeah, hunting would give me the fur to deal with this. Uh, no, no, it wouldn't necessarily. But food, we need food. Oh, I have no... I do have a temporary weapon though, George. Like, it's, it's a gamble. Like, I got the plus three off the pistol. So, like, maybe a fight. I would only take, like, a couple damage. Maybe none. Maybe none. Put it on the fire. All three. Don't hunt unless it's for your entertainment. <laughs> Remember about the red dice. Yeah, I know, I know the red dice are the risk. Because I would take three damage right from that, that thing. You know what gets me though? This one I always roll and it kills me. I lose my food and then I have to take two wounds at the end when I'm like only have one health left. Yeah, okay, no hunting, no hunting. All right, all right. Ruin my fun, ruin my fun. Okay, sure, sure, no hunting. If I have no food, I lose two health. I could gather food, though. I think gathering food and wood might be the play. It's safer, I think. Because I, I know that what's going to happen to the hunt. I'll get no fur, and I'll take, like, four freaking wounds or something silly. Or, th or uh, sorry, uh, I'll waste the pistol and take, like, two or three wounds. Better off building bricks. What is... Like, what is the Palisades... I'm at zero, but like, what is going to happen? I know there's a card in here that makes me reduce my Palisades. Is some of the animals, like, that helps with them? I'm not sure still what the Palisades help against. I know the weather. Oh, it breaks these. Yeah, this, I'll, I'll take damage from this, right? If I don't have a Palisades. That's what it's for. Uh, which phase can you put things in the fire, by the way? Uh, basically, right after production, before going into actions. That's when we. That's why I keep asking every time after we create our wood from production. I'm always asking you guys, should I put the wood now? Because that's the only time you can do it, unless you get the oil or you build the mast. You can do that in the same round at any time when that happens. So that's why I'm thinking like the mast would have been super cool to build the rope and get a fur, because then we could do the mast as like our last wood on the pile, and then we win, kind of thing. So as long as the event doesn't screw us, our production phase next time, we win. As long as we can survive through this round and have our production of two wood, I throw them on the fire for five, we win automatically. I just need to survive this round and the start of the next round event phase and we're good. I believe, right? Did I move this up? Did I move this up? We did our event. Got my tokens. Got my production, we put the fire, now our actions. Let's do it. What actions are we doing? Something to keep us alive, keep our wood safe. So we got the blanket. The blanket's gonna help us keep our wood, which we don't have safe, which we're fine. But it will just hurt us. But we can ignore some of it. So we gotta just make sure we don't take too much damage. Uh, we have the pistol in case the red die screws us, I think. So it's really only food. I, I think we just gather. So, like a hunt because I have the dog would be neat, but I just don't think it's the right play. I could do a hunt with Friday and just let him, let him take all the wounds, right? And even if he dies, like whatever. That might be the safer food, right? The safer food gather, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. The safer food gather would be with Friday. And if he dies, he dies. 
right? Because even if, if even if this takes like six wounds, it all goes on Friday, right? Or does it spill over to my character? I don't think it spills over, right? I just don't know if that whole like unfulfilled rule. Stay for food if you play ruthlessly and anti-thematic. <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, you can keep him alive, but if you want him dead, he might not die. I could use the gun. <laughs> In theory, the game theme and mechanic is realistic, or more so that dungeon crawlers, yet I gotta admit I'm struggling to follow this. Graham, this is a pretty complex game. Uh, this is not, not definitely not a, a newbie game for sure. But if you're getting into Gloomhaven, this actually is not bad at all. <laughs> he dies, he dies. A rocky reference. <laughs> So long for caring about the temporary guys. All right, I mean, I don't have to put them in there. I don't have to do it, okay? <laughs> I won't. And Friday could gather for some wood, right? Like, I shouldn't need the wood, but the wood could keep me alive if, if uh, too much snow happens or something. But again, I have the blankets. I have protection from the snow. I feel like I'm okay either way. I feel like I'm good. Go hunt. <laughs> oh, you guys want me to hunt? Oh, we'll hunt. All right, we'll hunt for the fun. For the fun. We'll hunt. Uh, but we need food. So I feel like a backup play. Just get worried. I get worried of an event card maybe stopping our production somehow. I could go for food with both? Like this? Yeah, because I'll have to reroll, right? It might not work. Yeah, you might be right. Don't hunt, just win. Gather yeah, wood both? Like do this? Gather wood like that? I, don't, I know I don't need to hunt, but you guys are telling me to hunt. <laughs> oh, you guys are trying to kill me. I know. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Here's my theory, though. I need to succeed on getting food somehow. Um, and is food always guaranteed here? Food's always guaranteed, right? Yeah, you're always guaranteed food. I feel like Hunt is the play. And I do it with Friday. <laughs> if you're not hunting, gather one food. But it has to be us for sure gather food. Gather food. Okay. We'll try to gather some wood with Friday. No dog. No hunt. No hunt. No hunt. All right. Is this gather some wood, maybe fail with some reroll? I don't know. Maybe not though. Like I don't want to draw cards either because that could lead to bad things. Or I get another little temporary worker guy. And you know what? Let's do this. Let's get crazy. Let's hunt with our guy and let's Gather with Friday, and we're going to spend three, and we're going to get a temporary worker, and we're going to get the fireplace going. I'm going to hunt with my pawn, even though I think it's totally the wrong thing to do. Because, like, I'm going to draw, like, a six 
damaged guy. Gather wood, not food. Okay. Yeah, because I'm guaranteed food here. Okay. Gathering wood. All right. We're going with this. We're going with this. Okay. Fine. Final answer. No more bets. No more bets. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. No threat hunt. An iguana. Oh, look at that fur. Oh, I'm going to take extra damage. Okay. So because of this is a for sure health loss, I'm going to spend the pistol because it's me. <laughs> Pistola is gone. So I take one wound because I a pistol only gives me a plus three temporary. I go to lose one weapon. That gives me another damage. Right? Because I don't have the weapon level to reduce. I get three food. Let's see, this fireplace is going to save me. This fireplace is the key. That's I want to build it for fun. This should work out, I think. Uh, so I get three food. And I get an additional wound. When I go over that spot, I lose a morale. And I get a fur. So for those that haven't seen it yet, here's a fur token. In the second edition, not a white cube, but a uh, cool little pelt. Uh, okay. That's an iguana. <laughs> Rezard says, fun fact, basically, in the Polish version, Friday is basically called heel. <laughs> we got fur from the iguana. I know, Graham, I know. He didn't shave like the alligator did, that's all. It's like heel man in your language. <laughs> poor Friday, poor Friday. Okay, uh, so that's the hunt. Thank you, doggy. All right, uh, what are we on? Build. We're good. Auto success on the build. Temporary worker stuff. The usual. So fireplace goes up here. So he just has three discovery. And because he has to draw a card, he doesn't draw one, he'll just take a damage. And that reroll token stays there because we didn't see a success. So Friday has got two wounds out of four-ish he can take. Uh, Michael, Friday can be the lead character, but if you're doing the action with him, you have to be the lead. He can, he has to be support. He can never be, he can never be the lead when you use your own, uh, your own character. He can't be on top, but he totally can go off on his own and do actions and even have the dog supporting him. He just can never be the lead over a player. That is all. At least that's how I understand it. Actually, we still have it up. Uh, hold on. Double check. Uh, Friday can be assigned to an action as the only action pawn or with a neutral action pawn, including the dog. So right there, uh, point number four, Friday, Friday can be Michael, he can be assigned on his own to an action. See if we can uh, add in more. Uh, yeah. Okay. And Peach is saying you get rid of the reroll. It says on the next roll. Mm, thought we read already that that's not how those work. Okay, let's see. I know there's a section on those tokens. I feel like the reroll sits there until it's used. But you might be right. You might be right. 
I don't know. I don't know where those are. Yeah, let's check the card, but... Uh, yeah, this one you're talking about, right? Put a token on the build, gather and explore spaces. During the next action of each type, you must re-roll one V result. No, it's very clear. It's very clear that I need to get that result to use this token. Yeah, it's very clear. So I, I didn't roll that result, so I, the token doesn't go away. Yeah, that's how they work by default. That card is just like, you know, laying it out on the card for you. Hmm. Oh, but you're saying on the next action, even if I don't roll the dice? Hmm. Hmm. Is there an entry for that? Sleepless night? Doesn't matter, that's how I read it. I feel like those are just when you roll, but I could see I could see it either way, Peach. You might be totally right. You might be totally right. But it is interesting. It, I see what you're saying. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it, but you might be right. You might be right. Okay. Um Where were we? We were doing our actions. We slide these down. Okay, we have the fireplace. Well, now we have a fireplace, uh, so one food can heal two health once during the, each night phase. And that feels awesome. All right, weather. Oh, you've never played? You, oh, okay, cool, cool. No, no, it makes sense. You, you do make sense. That's the thing with some ambiguous rules and text like that, right? It's like, it tells me I reroll that result, but it also tells me only on the next action. So, like, what, what's the deal? <laughs> but most tokens in this game, until you satisfy them, they stay. Like until I actually put two workers here, this token will sit here haunting me uh, and, and, and making me scared to do that action. Like you basically have to like satisfy a token to get rid of it. Seems easy. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. So I'll do this one first. Uh, a palisade would get destroyed, but we're at level zero. So we take a damage. Okay, no snow. Like, here's what I think has happened. So, we all know the dice gods watch my streams. They mess with me all the time, okay? Sometimes they mess with me and make it look like I do crazy things. Um, but we're live. We're 100% this is live. Uh, but I, I think when I got these blankets and I put these nice blue tokens on them, uh, I think the dice gods watching the stream said, you know what, Rob? We're never going to let you roll snow. We're not going to give you snow. But on next time you play, like the previous two times, when you don't have a way to stop snow, you're literally going to roll snow on the orange die every time. Because that's what the game did to me. I swear to God it did it to me. I swear to the dice gods. That's what it did to me in my first two games. I lost every time because the snow just gobbled up my wood. Or killed me if I didn't have any wood. It just like killed me super flat out. Like so much snow. It was crazy. Like the game knew I was in Canada, I thought. And it was rolling snow. Now... I get the blankets and the game like laughs at me and I don't roll snow. Like what the heck is that all about? Anyways, uh, but it's four clouds and we have four roof. So see, I roll fours a lot though. I get four clouds a lot, but it's usually like this. Usually it looks like this. <laughs> this is what I roll a lot. Or if I only roll three clouds, it, it seems to do this a lot. But today on stream, uh, it's not happening. So nobody believes me. You guys think I'm crying wolf, but that's what happened, I swear. You know nothing, Rob Snow. <laughs> <laughs> when I rolled snow, I didn't use the blanket. Uh, yeah, you're right. I did roll snow once, and I took the wound. But still, I still only rolled one snow so far. That's crazy to me. That's crazy. Okay, so that's done. Uh, night phase. We are definitely going to use a food to heal to uh, during the night phase. One, two, 
Okay. Um, we're going to eat, and the perishable food's gone, so we don't take wounds. Uh, what else is happening? I feel like that's it. Uh, we move the round marker. Okay, we're now in a round where the ship, the ship is off in the water. We can see the ship, but we don't have the pile built big enough to light it on fire yet. We have fire ready, but we do not have the pile built. So we're going to draw an event card. Please, please be nice. Please be nice. You can only use fireplace once per turn. Yeah, I know that. I just did that, right? Yeah, it says once, once during each night phase, one food equals plus two health. Yeah, I, I wish, I wish I could gobble up all that food. That that would be broken. I'd be digging for the fire every game. I think. I feel like that'd be good. Oh, we got some predators. No food sources anymore. Predators have their prey. See, I'm thankfully it's not wood. Thankfully, it's not wood, I think. So we get a green token, which we already have, so we don't put another one. Uh, the closest food camp first is exhausted. Cover it with a token. There's no food. Uh, if there's no food there, each player gets a wound. So that's crazy. Good thing we don't need it. But if that was wood, man, I'd cry. I would have cried. Uh, so this will go to the bottom. It's a fight. So two characters, two weapon level, you can uncover that food and get a token. Otherwise you resolve the effect again and you're going to cover up more food. So this slide over. Now this one's going to happen. We avoided it for so long, but we're going to put a rain cloud in the weather space. So that's like an extra cloud. So we're only at four level roof. Now technically we could get five clouds and we'll lose some wood and, and food and all that stuff, but I don't think it's going to get there. Uh, but that's gone. Then we go to morale, we bump it up one. Uh, I'm actually, I feel like it's just good, but I'll just take two tokens like we've been doing. I mean, I could heal, but we'll just take two tokens. Uh, then we go to production, where we don't get food because it's covered now, do the event, but we get two wood. And now is the window again, where we take two wood, and we're gonna put that two wood right on the fire, on the wood pile, and it's now five out of five. And then we actually have fire, so I believe it's immediately. Goal of the scenario, you need to build the fire item and the wood pile uh, by the 10th, 11th, or 12th round to be spotted by a ship. When you have both of these on rounds 10, 11, or 12, you win. So there's no like window, I don't think, to check victory conditions like in some board games. I feel like it's instantly. I feel like it's instantly. So if, if I needed the mass to build to put some wood on there, I drew the oil. If I put the wood on there to like win later, it would have happened right away. So GG. Yeah, it's basically the event. If, if an event came off that stopped us from getting wood there, we would have had to been scrambling and trying to figure out how to get wood for the next round and hopefully not roll a bunch of uh, things to get rid of wood. Like five clouds and, and like as long as we didn't get more than three snow, I think we would have been okay. But yeah, that's it. So thank you, everybody, for your help. Without you guys, I definitely wouldn't have won, I don't think. Because I was thinking of doing some different things. I mean, maybe it would have turned out okay. But I do appreciate the things I learned today from you guys were the gather deck. I didn't gather enough before. I was just scared of all the decks. And the gather and explore... I feel like we're okay to us today. And reminding me which threats to deal with and which ones not to deal with, I normally just ignore almost all of them. But the fact that I was keeping some of them at bay by constantly just putting that spare worker there, when normally, if I had a spare worker, I would have put it somewhere else to like gather or build something and probably would have drawn more brown cards in my playthroughs. I feel like I draw brown cards, like three or four brown cards in a game because I'm trying to like build roof to catch up or something, and I'm scrambling. And then I fail it. I fail on the roof build, then I'm drawing brown cards, bad things are happening. Yeah, it's uh, very interesting. But I do appreciate it. It was really neat, really neat how you guys were recommending, like, you guys watching this later without looking at the chat, you can look at the chat while you play, but like, almost every turn, there was like, probably three or four different ways it could have went. Everyone had their own suggestions and own ways to do it. And even I had a couple ways I was deciding between so it's like, who knows if playing some different things, it would have just turned out good. Like, did we get lucky on some of our things? 
Did we get lucky? I, I don't know. Like, is it just luck? That basically on this playthrough I drew blankets, but then I didn't even need to use it. Is it because I had the pistol as a starting weapon, even though I drew it too late? Um, but like having the pistol, did that make it better? I think, oh, another thing I learned, stay away from the hunt uh, if you don't need to. Before I was rushing the hunt, I would get my weapon level up a couple, and then I would just go hunt to try to get fur to build more roof faster without using wood. But then my health would be like this by now. I would I'd have been like that much health at right now because I would have been getting wounded over and over again trying to find fur. And I would just be using the dog. And Friday has died in every single playthrough I've played until this one. I would use him to do some hunts and he'd be dead. <laughs> yes, I know the other scenarios are way harder. I, I understand that. I understand this is the intro scenario and the tutorial, but uh, man. Yeah, it's easy to win once you know how, says George. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like you, I could have made like one different choice throughout that playthrough at some point in mid-game that could have led me down it. Like if I started going for the shortcut, for example, would that have, like I wouldn't maybe have built the roof so fast. Maybe some more damage would have happened. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. But who knows? Maybe on a different time I get better hunts where that one hunt could have been better. I don't know. Elko says, GG, I might put this under the hashtag, Rob and Mel made me buy it. Thank you for the support. I appreciate the super chat, Velko. <laughs> That's awesome. Do your research, though. I, I haven't seen the other scenarios. And if anyone in the chat has any thoughts on that, I haven't even read them. This is just the only one I've been focused on, because literally I've only been like learning the game for like a day and a half. Um, but there are other scenarios uh, in this game, and I'm excited to try some of them, even if we just get crushed. I just want to see how 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 they get like how thematic they go and there's other characters right we got the soldier the cook and the explorer all have different abilities there it is Falco. thank you so much i appreciate it and there are expansions i think for this game too or at least promos and stuff um but yeah right here right here so there's like uh so there's scenario two, like some cursed island thing. Goal of the scenario, put a cross in five times in each time on a different island tile. So I don't know, we're trying to keep the curse away. That's interesting. Sounds like a seventh continent scenario to me. Uh, we got like Volcano Island. Like who doesn't want to play on Vol Volcano Island? That sounds like, what's that other game? Um, oh, what's that other game we have with the volcano in the middle? I don't remember what it's called. But it's a super fun like family game. That's what that reminds me of right there, seeing the volcano in the middle. Uh, we got Jenny needs help. I don't know what that's all about, but we gotta help Jenny. And they all have like different, they all work different supposedly. Family Robinson. I don't know what, it looks like bingo. You're playing some bingo there. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Cannibal Island. <laughs> ah, that's cool. Well, yeah, it's got like a ton of scenarios. It, it feels very much like this War of Mine. If I played this first, I would have been complaining this War of Mine is definitely a ripoff of this game. Obviously with a different theme and some different twists, of course. But like it feels like the exact same style of game. So if you already have this War of Mine and you haven't played all your scenarios and you like playing that game over and over again, I feel like you don't need this game. I feel like you don't need this game. If you already have this game and you love it, I would still probably say go get this War of Mine, but I don't know if I'd say go backwards. But again, this is a quicker playthrough than this War of Mine. And, oh yeah, there are other scenarios. I think there's some online you can get, and there's like some box of promos. But I mean, this is like, I'm just showing the base set, so what you buy here is like, you got tons of challenge here. And again, I only played solo. Supposedly this game is more interesting at multiplayer, like with extra players. I'm going to try it with Mel, we'll play it. Oh, and a book of new scenarios is coming soon, too. Oh, wow. I, okay, that's cool. Oh, that's a Kickstarter. They announced it in their portal thing, right? I think. I think they're doing, like, a Kickstarter for that. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm mixing up with something else. I'm for Brad Brian. Yeah, thank you, everyone, who's, who's hanging out late with us. I'm sorry. <laughs> happy Friday. Happy Friday.
Yeah, Kickstarter? Okay, it is coming to Kickstarter. I thought so. I thought I saw something about that. But again, I'm not worried about getting other scenarios and expansions for this game. I've just only scratched the surface, I feel. I feel like now that I kind of have the rules more down, I feel like I can teach this game now. So I'm going to teach Mel, hopefully get Mel caught up, and then we'll play like a two-player stream one of these weekends or something uh, where we'll, we'll tackle it two-player. I assume we'll try a different scenario. Uh, yeah, George, I'll play some Spirit Island Jagged Earth. It's just... Uh, it was on our recent polls, and it didn't really get the votes. But I'll get to it eventually. It's just not uh, like a high priority based on our Patreons. Uh, if you want to help influence games that we play on the channel, games I add to the collection, uh, there's a link down in the video description to patreon.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. Uh, if you're at the producer tier or the supporter tier, you can vote on polls that I post um, and help uh, influence that. Tomorrow we're probably doing a QA. and a uh, I still haven't fully decided. You might see that pop up soon. If not, it'll be later in, in the week, next week. Uh, but on Sunday we are playing Star Wars Outer Rim. So as soon as I'm done cleaning this up, I have to go start reading the rules for that. Uh, but we're going to try some Star Wars Outer Rim. Mel and I are going to play two-player. And yeah, that was the game that won the last poll. So we have put up a poll on Patreon to decide which game we play this weekend. And Star Wars Outer Rim was the leader. And I forget what was second. Maybe Spirit Island was second. Maybe Spirit Island was second, actually, George. Um, but yeah, we'll play some Spirit Island. I'm going to be playing some solo Spirit Island on the channel uh, with the Jagged Earth stuff. I, I haven't even opened the box yet. Um, again, thank you to Sam for sending that over. Um, and I definitely want to try that multiplayer, too. I like Spirit Island solo a lot, but I do love playing with multiple players. I miss Justin. I wish he could play with us right now. Damn COVID. Uh, but yeah, we will play it. But we will play some more Spirit Island on the channel soon. It's been a while, I know. I was waiting for Jagged Earth to come. Uh, and we will play that. Um, but I don't know when. Could be like in the next month. Could be in the next couple weeks. I'm not 100% sure. I have to do some other games first, I think. But uh, yeah. So we're going to play some uh, Outer Rim in two days. So feel free to show up for that one. We'll probably only have played one game of it. So again, if you're interested in watching that and helping us out, or aka helping Mel win, uh, as I know that's what you guys are going to do. <laughs> and I'm okay with that completely. But come help us out with rules, make sure we're okay while we're playing. It's not the most complicated game, it looks like, based on the rating on Board Game Geek. Um, but yeah, we'll be playing that one. But thank you all for helping me uh, see that this game can be beat. Uh, Robinson Crusoe, that was pretty cool. But again, you got to be okay with losing this game. That's part of the fun, is trying to figure this game out. I feel like it's a, quite the puzzle. Cannibals is rough, says Michael. Oh, wow. <laughs> Outer Rim is fun. Act up for Outer Rim, let's go. Nice. Mel needs no help to win, by the way. Yeah, but you guys will help me lose then, if that's the way you want me to say it. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to get out of here. Hit that like button. Share the video. Uh, leave comments down below if you're watching this in the future. Let me know if you have answers to any of the rules, questions that came up. I appreciate the feedback. Uh, we'll have more of this game on the channel, so subscribe. Hit the notification bell. If you want to catch us out live in a future playthrough, subscribe. Again, hit that notification bell. Or check out youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table and set reminders for any of the upcoming live streams on the main YouTube page. But thanks, everyone, for hanging out. I appreciate it. Uh, this has been fun. And it's definitely a cool game, but there's a lot of luck involved. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of luck. That's all I got to say. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Happy Friday. See you later.